Hello, nerdies and nerds, and welcome to the inaugural tournament of Spartan Sasuke. Twenty sixteen feels like forever ago when I started the first tournament. Man, this brings me back. But he's leaning towards the right. Oh no, he's losing it. He's out. With two seconds left. He's running out of time. No, he's out of time. Onto the 14th, 15th. He now must run up to the top one. Come on up. No. He's there in the top. Last one. Can he do it? Yes. 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 He's done it. As time went on, the course and the competitors continued to evolve. And now for the final legend! No! Oh, up! This is what took him out in the last tournament! He goes for it! And no! One second left! Come on up! No! Smokey! He's on base to get it! Come on! Yes! Smokey is done it! Smokey Massacre! A lot has changed in jumping over the years, but one thing always remained consistent. Halo 5. Call me down into the 6th one, going into the 7th, into the 8th, no! No, Smokey, it's over! Alright, one more for Smokey. Smokey, spree us! No! No, Smokey, it's a 10, he's out! It's all or nothing, Smokey! No! No, Smokey! Flame goes for it, Flame. No, no, he jumped him short. He came so close. At this pace, Smokey will be our first two time champion. Come on, Smokey. He's done it. Three seconds left. Smokey Massacre. Kaizen Seha. Complete victory. Every time somebody wins, the course gets harder. Lenny Champ looking into the fifth flash. No, he comes up short and tournament 14 is over. Sometimes I let my ambitions get the best of me. He's getting the ball onto the track. Alright, he's onto the track. Ooh, he's a little out of control. Come on, Swan. He's nearing the end of the track. Swan, he comes up short. But I never gave up. I learned from my mistakes and continued to grow. Come on up. He goes for it. No, no, he slipped. No! One more left to go for Fireball before he completes it. Fireball, he jumps up short! Looking into the third ledge! Up, double up! No! No! Up, not again! He's off! Elena Champ is on the cubicle climb. He's at a good pace so far as he's nearing the top of the obstacle. Into the salmon ladder, but he overshoots the ledge! After I'd reached 1,000 runs, I took some time to reflect. By then, I, like many, were ready to move on to a new game. However, fate had different plans. We also made the tough call to delay shipping Forge past launch as well. Despite the setbacks, the show went on. We saw the rise of a new generation of competitors, which gave birth to new stars. And he's starting to pick up the pace here on the salmon ladder. Oh, he slips going into the sixth ledge, but he's able to save himself. But he does not find the fifth one, and he's not able to save it this time. Last cycle, can he make it? Fozzie! No, he can't. He's come up short. Fireball is giving it everything he's got, but it's not enough. Fireball is out of time. There was a period in time where I was convinced we'd be forever stuck on Halo 5, doomed to remain on an aging game that most people have moved on from. If it wasn't for Spartan Sasuke and Halo jumping, I certainly would have moved on. But no matter how grim the future looked, there was always that small sliver of hope that something new would come. The wait seemed infinite. Now, after seven long years, the time has finally come.
Hello everyone, and welcome to Spartan Sasuke 23, the first tournament on Halo Infinite. I am your host, RPG445, and we got an exciting tournament in store for you. 100 Spartans from all around the world have arrived in this desert-filled Mount Midoriyama to take on a redesigned course. For the first time, players on PC are able to compete alongside those on Xbox, opening the doors for those who previously did not have a chance. As always, our 100 competitors will face off against the four-stage course. Although it's a new game, the rules remain the same. Complete a stage to move on to the next, but fall in the water or run out of time, your tournament is over. If one manages to achieve total victory, they will win $100 and place themselves in Jumping Immortality. Will somebody go all the way to achieve the ultimate prize, or will all 100 fail for the 10th tournament in a row? It is time to find out. This is the Ultimate Survival Attack, Spartan Sasuke! All 100 Spartans begin their journey here on the first stage. The course begins with the new diamond steps. Competitors must jump across four angled steps shaped like diamonds. Next is the hazard bar. Last seen in Tournament 14, this obstacle was the Spartan Slayer in both of its previous appearances. Then it's the new Pharaoh's box, where competitors must jump across the angled ledges to get around the box. Then it's on to the always tricky Jumping Spider. Now with a pallet instead of a bouncer, competitors must jump through the five ledges with the jump to the fifth ledge now being a drop to make this already tough obstacle even tougher. After that, it is the new Eclipse Prism. Competitors must cling to either side of the wall to reach the cylinder. After that, the Warped Wall is the 6th obstacle, but now there's 3 more obstacles after it. And that begins with the all-new Joust Clash. Competitors will hop into the Mongoose, drive it down the track, and jump out at the right time to land on one of the two ledges. From there, they will corner jump to the outside of the wall to complete the obstacle. Returning from the previous two tournaments is the Pit Stop. Competitors can use either the cones or the tires to make it across this very tough obstacle. And lastly, it is the new rope jungle. Competitors will use whatever time is left to climb up the five ropes and race to the end. If you make it through everything and hit the landmine in under 110 seconds, you will move on to the second stage. How many competitors will advance past the first stage this tournament? We are about to find out as our first ever run on Halo Infinite is about to begin. The first of 100 runs this tournament is the newcomer Jammy Elements. This guy has been very excited to do a run on Spartan Sasuke and he's finally getting his first chance to take on Spartan Sasuke. Jammy Elements. Looking to defeat stage 1 here, 9 obstacles with a time limit of 110 seconds, and he's off! And he's on to the second step of the diamond steps, hopping across to the third nicely, looking into the fourth, Jammy doing a little weird slide there, but he makes it across and onto the hazard bar. This obstacle has been very tough in the past, but Jammy Elements makes it through. And now for the new Pharaoh's box, how will we handle this new obstacle? Gets into the first ledge nicely, going into the second ledge, but he just overshoots it and is not able to land on the second ledge. Ah, oh, tough luck. Anyways, next up we have another newcomer. This is August SC. August, he's one of our PC runners, one of many this tournament. We'll see how he does here on stage one. Going pretty quickly here on the diamond steps, taking a much quicker approach in Jammy, but now looking into the hazard bar. Ooh, gets a weird slide, but able to stop his momentum nicely. But will he be the first through the Pharaoh's box? Looking into the second ledge, he's got it nicely. Now for the third. Nice landing and mates the dismount. 
and he'll be the first to attempt the jumping spider this tournament, and now has a pallet instead of a bouncer, much different than what it was in Halo 5, but August is gonna come up short of the first ledge, not quite able to get the momentum he needed. And on to Potato Jube 69 This guy is good friends with Killer the Man. We'll see how he does. Got 110 seconds. Potato Jube is off into the Diamond Steps. Potato not able to make it into the third step. He's going to come up short and fall in the water. And that leads us into our first returning competitor. This is Assassin Man. This guy was formerly known as Pothole Soup. He missed the last tournament, but now returns for his third appearance here in Tournament 23. Assassin Man nicely through the Diamond Steps, looking into the Hazard Bar. Can he get to this mount? Yes, he can. Assassin Man onto the Pharaoh's Box. Almost comes up short of the first ledge, but he gets into the second. Oh, but not quite. He's going to walk off the second ledge. Uh, he almost had it, too. And that leads us on to Game Show MC67. He made his debut in the last tournament. Now returns for Tournament 23. Let's see how he does. Game Show quickly through the Diamond Steps. Nicely done onto the Hazard Bar. Nobody has failed this so far, but Game Show is gonna make it through nicely onto the Pharaoh's Box. We just saw Assassin Man go out here. Can Game Show get through it? He's onto the second ledge, looking into the third game show. Oh, does not get a good jump for that dismount, and he's gonna come up short. He need to sprint for that dismount, and he did not get that sprint. And now we have Shadow Run 132, another guy that made his debut in the last tournament, getting good luck from a pair of red colored Spartans. Let's see how Shadow Run does. He failed the rolling hurdle in the last tournament. That is not on this course, it was going to be, but Halo Infinite's rolling ball mechanics are very laggy at the moment, so unfortunately we could not bring in that obstacle. It's replacement, the Pharaoh's Box. Only one per person has beaten it so far, and Shadowrun is going to be the second. And he enters the Jumping Spider, having set a personal best, but he wants to make it far on this course, and he's the first to mount into the first ledge of the Jumping Spider. Getting closer to the new drop section, Shadow, he gets it nicely. And now for the new Eclipse Prism, he's going to take the right side and Shadow Run nicely through. And now heading towards the warped wall with 65 seconds left, Shadow Run makes it up in one with a minute left going into the Joust Clash. This new obstacle, he's got to get the timing just right. Shadow Run makes it onto the ledge nicely. Now needs to make the corner jump up and Shadow Run is going to make it across with two obstacles remaining. Now for the pit stop, gets a good safe jump on the tire. Goes for the second, he's not using the cones, he's only using the tires, that is perfectly fine. He's got 35 seconds left, still enough time. As long as he doesn't make a simple mistake, Shadow Run is going to make it through the pit stop and is one obstacle away from completing the stage. He just needs to make it up the rope jungle and he'll be the first clear on Halo Infinite. Shadow Run, he's got 15 seconds left. With two more ropes left. Makes it up to the fourth one. Less than 10 seconds, he needs to make it up. Shadow Run, just a dismount remaining and Shadow Run with 3.3 seconds remaining becomes our first Ever clear on Halo Infinite. Well done, Shadow Run. On his second appearance, clear stage one for the first time. Shadow Run, he was the first to get through the jumping spider. Has not had any major slips up slip ups. He was a little slow on the later obstacles, but he makes it through swiftly and he moves on to stage two. Yeah. 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 Go, bro. He's done yeah. it! And now we have our first fast forward. Bergussin fails the Pharaoh's box. And then we had Killer Light, who was followed up appropriately by Drunk Driver 9. Going out on the jumping spider. He gets the first ledge, but just slips off. And that leads into Destroy 42. Does not get a crouch for the hazard bar. And that's followed by Owned by Omar. 
who met a similar fate. And that leads us on to competitor number 12. This is Glow Combs. He failed the rolling hurdle in the last tournament, much like Shadowrun. Let's see how Glow Combs does on his second appearance. 110 seconds on the clock, and Glow Combs is heading across the diamond steps. Now for the hazard bar, can he get through this? Glow Combs, yes he can. On out to the Pharaoh's boss as he gets into the first ledge, gets a safe jump. Heading into the second ledge, doing another safe jump. No shame in that at all. He wants to be careful there, and he's and that carefulness has paid off as he enters the jumping spider. Glowcombs gets a good jump off the pallet, and Glowcombs is traversing the inside of the jumping spider. Now makes it to the drop. Can he get it? Yes, he can. Glowcombs is now going to take the left side on the Eclipse Prism. Can he make the jump? Yes, he can. Glowcombs has got a minute left going into the warp wall. Can he get up the warp wall? Yes, he can. He's up it in one. Glowcombs now for the Joust Slash. Driving the Mongoose down. He's also going to get the jump across nicely. And Glowcombs is going to defeat the Joust Slash. He's up 41 seconds as he enters the pit stop. Can he clear much like Shadowrun? Will we have our second clear here by Glowcombs? He's got 30 seconds left as he enters the fourth cone of the pit stop. Now for the fifth, can make the dismount. Glowcombs eyeing down the rope jungle. Can he make it? 20 seconds left as he looks into the second. Looks into the third. Glowcombs nicely up into the fourth one. Glow into the fifth, and Glow Combs is going to be our second clear. 8.9 seconds remaining for Glow Combs, and he's also going to clear stage one for the first time, much like Shadowrun. Nicely done, Glow Combs. He had a very good run all throughout, getting through the Eclipse Prism nicely, and made through the first stage nicely to get his first clear. We will see you on stage two, Glowcombs. There's no way. Yes. 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 Let's freaking go. Wow. My first Good job, stage man. one clear in the Hail Jolene course. Nice. Let's go. Wow, that was great by Glowcombs. Let's see if Game Man Gaming YT can follow up on that same success. He wore number one in the last tournament where he failed the jumping spider. And now GG returns for tournament 23. GG through the diamond steps heading into the hazard bar. Makes it across with a good dismount. Now for the Pharaoh's boss, but he's going to come up short of the first ledge. GG not able to get as far today. And on now to Foamy Boy making his fourth appearance. Foamy boy, how will he do today? We're about to find out. Foamy made his debut back in Tournament 20 and now returns for Tournament tw 23. Foamy boy into the third step. Looking into the fourth step and he's going to make it across. Foamy boy onto the hazard bar. Foamy is going to make it onto the Pharaoh's boss. We just saw GG go out here. Let's see if he can get through it. Gets into the second ledge nicely. Foamy makes it across the Pharaoh's box as he now runs to the Jumping Spider. Will he be able to defeat this obstacle? Taking his time for the run up. And he's gonna come up short of the pallet and he's gonna fall before it. And now we have Hi, I'm Galactic. Back for his third appearance, made his debut back in Tournament 21, and now returns for Tournament 23. Let's see how Galactic does. Will third time be the charm here on stage one? He's never beaten it before. Let's see if today will be his lucky day. Galactic is through the diamond steps and now running to the hazard bar. He's going to take his time for the dismount. How will he handle this new obstacle, the Pharaoh's Box? Galactic into the second ledge nicely. Looking into the third. Galactic, no, oh, he overshoots it. Much like Jammy Elements earlier. Ah, oh, tough break. And that leads us on to Candy, followed by a whole bunch of random numbers. Da 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 da, the Candy Man can. 
Let's see if the Candyman can get through stage one. The Candyman cannot get through the first obstacle. Aw, oh, that's tough. And that leads us on to It's Many Man, who also fails the Diamond Steps. And then Lewitz 320 with the Cat Ears drowns in the Hazard Bar. Zero Beat fails the Hazard Bar as well. And then we had Vilksen, another Hazard Bar fail. A lot of randos failing that obstacle, but now we have Spartan Walnut 71. He is not a rando. He is back for his ninth appearance. He did miss the last tournament, but now returns for the first Halo Infinite tournament, Spartan Walnut. Let's see how he does. He has gotten close to clearing stage one in the past, but has never been able to get to the end of the stage. Will today finally be today? Spartan Walnut clears. Spartan Walnut, he was the first run after the previous total victory in Tournament 13. And now Spartan Walnut is running to the Jumping Spider. Let's see if he can get through this obstacle. Spartan Walnut, he jumps and comes up short. And much like Foamy Boy, he's going to come up short of the pallet. And his hand got stuck in there. That looked painful. But now we have newcomer Flodos. Let's see how Flodos does. The newcomer, he's got 110 seconds for nine obstacles, beginning with the Diamond Steps. Flodos, nicely through the first obstacle. Have not seen too many fails on that first obstacle yet. But Flodos is handling those first two obstacles nicely. How will he do on his third obstacle, the Pharaoh's Box? He's looking good on it so far as he gets the dismount. Flodos. Now for the Jumping Spider, we just saw Spartan Walnut go out here, but can Flodos beat this obstacle? He gets into the second ledge. Now for the third, taking his time going into the fourth, and he's going to run down to the fifth ledge nicely. Now for the new obstacle, the Eclipse Prism. Flodos is going to make it across, and Flodos is going to make it to the warp wall on his first appearance. He's putting on a really good run so far, but is not able to get up the wall in one. Can he get up the wall in two? Yes, he can. He's still got plenty of time left. He's got 50 seconds for the Joust Clash. No one's failed this so far. Hopefully, Flodos will not be the first to fail it. He's going to jump across to the other side to get the corner jump. An interesting move, but it's going to pay off for Flodos as he enters the pit stop. Will we have our third clear? And will it be by this newcomer? Flodos is into the third one, slips down to the tire, but gets a bad jump going into the fourth one. Oh, if he had just a little more momentum, he would have had it. Oh, that's tough. But now we have the regular Halo fan. He made his debut in the last tournament and is very active in the community as of recent. But let's see how he does. He is very dedicated. Let's see if he can pick up the first clear. He put in a lot of practice for this tournament. And he wants to follow up from the last tournament. He got pretty far. He got to the captain swing the last tournament, which was the fifth obstacle. Seems a little laggy going into the Pharaoh's boss, but he is handling the obstacle nicely nevertheless. But this guy, he got to the captain swing last tournament, which was the fifth obstacle. It's a new fifth obstacle today. Let's see if he can get back there. He needs to get through this jumping spider first. It is not an easy obstacle, but Halo Fan is going to jump down. Oh, what a good save jump by Halo Fan. Barely able to get onto that fifth ledge as he enters the Eclipse Prism. And Halo Fan is going to set a personal best as he heads towards the warp wall. Halo Fan is gonna make it up in one, and he's gonna jump in between the columns to get to the Joust Clash. And Halo Fan, oh no, he's not able to make it. He went into the death barrier. Let's, let's see what happened. It looked like he mistimed his jump. And it pushed him away from where he needed to land. Ah, oh, tough scene. But now we have Robotic Pie making his fourth appearance on the course. And we're going to jump ahead to the Jumping Spider. Robotic Pie, can he defeat the Jumping Spider? He gets a safe jump on that first ledge. Now looking into the second. The third. He's into it with a slide. The fourth with a slide as well, and Robotic Pie is going to defeat the Jumping Spider. 
I'll now to the, to the Eclipse Prism Robotic. Can he defeat this obstacle? He gets the safe jump on the cylinder, and he's got 48 seconds going into the warp wall. Doesn't have as much time. He might want to pick up the pace here on these later obstacles, and failing the warp wall in this first attempt is not going to help him, and he's failed it again. He's really running short on time. Will he even have enough time to complete the remaining obstacles? He's only got 30 seconds left for the Joust Clash. He's gonna have to hustle here. Robotic is gonna come up short of the ledge. He jumps too early. And Robotic is out. And that leads on to Duke of Deuce, formerly known as Lord of Vu. He changed his gamer tag since the last tournament and is now known as Duke of Deuce. This guy was one of the first 23 people to take on Spartan Sasuke in the first tournament. He had a long hiatus before he came back in Tournament 90, but now he returns for his fifth appearance, and Duke Deuce has completed the hazard bar. On now to the Pharaoh's box, Duke Deuce is going to make it into the second ledge, Duke into the third nicely. Duke Deuce heading to the Jumping Spider. He has failed this obstacle before, but can he get through it today? He's slashing his sword. He is worried about this obstacle, but he's going to attack it. Duke Deuce, oh, he's going to get a lift on that pallet, but he makes it across to the first ledge. Gets into the second ledge, third ledge. Now for the fourth. No, Duke Deuce is going to come up short of the fourth ledge. Duke Deuce out on the Jumping Spider again. And then we had Daddy's turn, which was his turn to fail the Diamond Steps. Scuffed Homie failed the Hazard Bar. And then we had G3O, who also failed the Hazard Bar. And finally, we had Atarashi Shogun. <clears throat> nice looking armor there. And then we had Unsorted Guy. This guy is a prominent member in the Forge community. He failed the Pharaoh's Bot. But this guy, he made maps such as UG Wipeouts. And here on Halo Infinite, he made a remake of Hexagon from Fall Guys, so go check out that guy's maps. But next up, we have Fix the Wi-Fi making his second appearance. Missed last tournament, but now returns for Tournament 23. Let's see how Wi-Fi does. Wi-Fi. Heading across the Diamond Steps. Fix the Wi-Fi. A British competitor heading into the Hazard Bar. Gonna make it across, and now for the Pharaoh's box, we just saw Unsorted Guy go out here. Let's see if he can beat a Forger. Yes, he can. Fix the Wi-Fi is onto the Jumping Spider. This has taken out a few competitors so far, including Duke of Deuce. Let's see if Wi-Fi can make it across. He gets into the fourth ledge. Can he get the drop? Wi-Fi. Yes, he can. Fix the Wi-Fi is onto the Eclipse Prism. And he's going to make it across, but falls off! Oh no! Fix the Wi-Fi! Has failed in between the Eclipse Prism and the Warp Wall! Very similar to Mighty Max's fail on Stage 2 a couple of tournaments ago. And Wi-Fi, he beat the Eclipse Prism, but could not even make it to the Warp Wall. That is such a shame. But next up, we have Noob followed by a whole bunch of random numbers. This guy was formerly known as Nice Cat vs. Xbox in earlier tournaments, and he's more widely known in the Roblox community as Ikardas, who has done editing for a lot of Bubba Ace's recent tournaments along with myself. Anyways, let's see how he does. He's not going to make it into the hazard bar. Literally much better at editing that he is running the courses, at least on Halo. But next up, we have Free MMO Direct, another member from the Roblox community. Today, he's making his debut. He has he has made it far in quite a few Roblox courses. Let's see if he can bring that talent to Halo here on his Spartan Sasuke debut. Direct is through the hazard bar, unlike Ikardis, as he enters the Pharaoh's box, gets into the second ledge, into the third, and Direct is going to make it to the Jumping Spider. Let's see if he can get through this obstacle. A little bit of lag there, but he's heading into the jump. Does not get a tilt on that pallet, but he gets enough momentum to make it across. Nevertheless, can he get the drop? Direct, he's going to make the drop nicely. And now for the Eclipse Prism. 
Can he stick the ledge? No, he can't. He hit the wall and it cut off some of his momentum. And he is out on the Eclipse Prism. But now we have Bush Chase. This guy made his debut in Tournament 19 and is making his first appearance since then. Let's see how Bush Chase does. He posted a video of him beating this stage in practice with 34 seconds remaining. Let's see if he can do it here when it matters most. Bush Chase quickly threw the hazard bar now for the Pharaoh's box. And he's going to head into the second, quickly into the third. And Bush Chase heading to the jumpy spot are going to jump in between the columns to get there. Bush Chase is going to go quickly through this jumpy spider not taking any moment to breathe and bush chase is quickly into the eclipse prism oh gets a safe jump there he is you i guess he is human after all but now bush chase heading to the warped wall with 65 seconds left bush chase he's gonna make it up the wall in one can he get his first clear he's got three obstacles left and he's gonna make it through the joust slash Bush Case taking his time for the corner jump. He is a little worried about it, but he gets to jump nicely. It is not as easy as it may look, but now he's into the pit stop. He's into the second one. He's going to have to safe jump there on the cone. Into the third, but he overshoots it. Bush Case not able to complete the stage. Ah, uh, that is tough. But now we have Stoical Break 406. Making his Spartan Sasuke debut. This guy was formerly known as Clever Ninjas back on Halo the Master Chief Collection. And now he is back after missing most, if not all, of Halo 5. Let's see how he does. Stoical Break heading into the hazard bar. Gets a nice jump across, doing a little 360 there as he enters the Pharaoh's box. Let's see how he does. He's into the second ledge, into the third, and Stoical Break. He's good friends with King Sparkity, who competed way back when. But now Stoical Break is into the Jumping Spider, into the second ledge nicely, heading into the third ledge. Not as, not as fast as Bush Chase, but as long as he makes it to the end with more than zero seconds left on the clock, that is all that matters. Stoical Break is going to make it through the Eclipse Prism as he enters the Warp Wall. Let's see how he does here on a warp wall. Up it and one on his debut. Nicely done. Now for the joust flash. Can he get through this obstacle? And he's onto the ledge, but he's not going to make the corner jump. Stoical break out on the joust clash on his debut. And next up we had Kid Halo 4 who failed the steps. AO1 failed the Pharaoh's box. But Kami Yams failed the hazard bar. And then we had Super Dumpling. Hello, people's Bubba Ace here. And welcome to the 21st tournament of Ninja Warrior of Roblox. Making his 15th appearance on Spartan Sasuke is Bubba Ace, the host of Ninja Warrior of Roblox. He made his debut in Tournament 9 and has competed in every tournament since. Unfortunately, Bubba has never cleared the first stage on Spartan Sasuke. In his first 10 appearances, the furthest he got was the Jumping Spider. On his 11th appearance in Tournament 19, he would beat the Jumping Spider only to fail mix and match. In the last tournament, Bubba would beat a similar fate going out on another pallet jump, this time on the Captain Swing. Now Bubba enters Halo Infinite still looking for his first clear. He has cleared the first stage on other courses, but has never been able to do so here. Bubba, not the only competitor with a long drought on this course. Spinny and Gotenks also have super long droughts on Spartan Sasuke, having never cleared stage 1. They'll be running later, but right now Bubba Ace is on the course through the Diamond Steps. He has failed the first obstacle a couple times in the past, and he makes it through the Hazard Bar, something he could not do in Tournament 14. But how will he handle this new obstacle, the Pharaoh's Box? Bubba Ace is gonna make it across nicely. Bubba into the Jumping Spider. Let's see if he can defeat it today. Can he get through this obstacle for his third time? He gets through that pallet jump unlike past obstacles, but Bubba Ace gets into the second ledge. 
Now for the third into the fourth. Can he get the drop? Bubba Ace. He's gonna come up short of the drop, and he's not able to complete the jumping spider today. But now we have I'm so shit faced. Back for his second appearance. Last competed in tournament 19 where he failed the jumpy spider. The former host of DRL has been taken over by a new host, but he still competes in the DRL. Let's see how Shift does here on his second appearance. Taking a lot of time going into the second step, and he's gonna come up short of it. Oh, that is disappointing. But now we have El Booker Taco. Booker is back for his fourth appearance. He made his debut back in Tournament 20, has never beaten Stage 1. He used to host, of course, Tasuke. Don't know if he still hosts it. I'll have to follow up with him on that. But anyways, Booker Taco, can he clear Stage 1 for his first time? He's into the Pharaoh's box, looking into the second ledge. Into the third and Booker Taco is heading towards the Jumping Spider. Can he get through this? We saw Bubba Ace go out here. He's gonna hit the switch to reset the pallet. Did look a little off center, but Booker is gonna get into the first and the second ledges nicely. Booker looking into the third ledge. These are very big jumps, but Booker is gonna go right for the dismount and he's gonna make it. But now, for the Eclipse Prism, Booker, can he get through this? Booker, he's not going to make it. It looked like he rushed the dismount. I think if he took a little bit of a moment to pause, I think he would have had it. But now we have Wolf Ninja, the 15-time veteran. His last clear came way back in Tournament 18. Let's see if he can pick up clear number four today. Wolf Ninja, let's see how he does. Of the three times he has beaten Stage 1, he failed the Salmon Ladder each of those three times. But now Wolf Ninja looks to clear here on Halo Infinite. Wolf Ninja heading into the Pharaoh's box. Heading into the second ledge nicely. Can he get the third? Yes he can! Wolf Ninja heading towards the Jumping Spider. Let's see how he does here. Got 80 seconds left, should be plenty of time. Wolf Ninja is into the first ledge nicely. Wolf, he has competed in every tournament since his debut in Tournament 9. Who almost comes up short, but gets a nice safe jump there. Wolf Ninja heading into the Clips Prism. We just saw Booker go out here, and he's gonna get a safe jump, and makes the dismount. Wolf Ninja, now for the warp wall, he's getting deep into this stage, but can he get the job done? He's not able to get up the wall in one. Wolf Ninja, he is barely up it in two, he's got 45 seconds, should be enough time, but he cannot lollydag lolly too much. And Wolf is gonna get into the ledge of the Joust Clash nicely. Gets the corner jump, and Wolf Ninja, he's got two obstacles left, can he get clear number four? Wolf Ninja. Gets a safe jump on the first one. Gets another safe jump on the second, but he's not able to get a jump. Uh, and you could hear his reaction. Very disappointed by that result. But now we have Cobra back for his fourth appearance. He made his debut in Tournament 20. He cleared in Tournament 21, but failed the Jumping Spider in the last tournament. This is a guy who has beaten Stage 3 on some courses. He's gotten very far on some of the other courses, but has not been able to see that same success here on Spartan Sasuke, hoping to turn the narrative around here on Halo Infinite as Cobra is going to make it through the Pharaoh's box. And now for the Jumping Spider, where he's failed twice in the past. Can Cobra beat it today? He gets it to the first ledge nicely. Cobra looking into the second ledge. It's the inside of the spider that he typically struggles with. And Cobra fails yet again. What is it with Cobra and Jumpy Spiders? I don't get it. Ah, oh, tough luck. But now we have Blazia Hayes making his 16th appearance on the course. This guy, he cleared back in Tournament 19, but has yet to follow up with another clear since then. He's competed in every tournament since Tournament 8. Blazia Hayes, or Jante as we like to call him, He's heading into the Pharaoh's box. Gets into the second ledge. Ooh, just really low, but a safe jump there saves his day. 
Blaze of Haze now for the Jumping Spider. He's got 85 seconds left. Let's see if he can get through it. Unlike Cobra, he gets a really high jump off the pallet, but he's able to get into the first ledge nevertheless. He gets into the third ledge, into the fourth one. Jumping down to the fifth ledge, but he gets repelled back. Blaze your haze out on the jumping spider. He almost cleared it. He got a really high jump off the pallet. If you land a little further back, it will give you that, but you are still able to make it as demonstrated by Blaze your haze. But it is the drop that does him in. He does not get far enough on the ledge. And then we have Unhandy Heavy. Failing the Pharaoh's box. Butin Hagen fails the hazard bar. CJ Dub 5615 fails the jumping spider. As well as Sweaty H, who had one of the worst jumping spider attempts I've ever seen. Did he just walk off the side of the course? Yes, he did, Vase. Yes, he did. But now we are halfway through this first stage, and next up is Expose. Expose has competed a lot in Jumping's past. He missed out on most of Halo 5, and now he's making his Spartan Sasuke debut wearing that Santa hat. This tournament was filmed around the Christmas holidays, and now Expose heading into the Pharaoh's box. But he competed back in the days of Halo 4 in the Master Chief Collection, missed out on most of Halo 5, but now returns. For infinite as Expose enters the Jumping Spider. Expose is going to get into the first ledge nicely, into the second ledge. The third ledge, Expose into the fourth. Can he get the drop down? Comfortable landing. Expose now for the Eclipse Prism. He's making it far. And oh, he almost had it, but he slides off. I think if he saved jump there, he would have had the jump. But next up, we have a blast from the past. Spartan Sasuke's past to be specific. This is Philly Season, formerly known as Team Sparkity. He last competed in Tournament 15, but now makes his return for Tournament 23. We have not seen this guy compete in a very long time, and he is finally back. Let's see how he does. Philly Season, in his... In his previous 14 appearances, has cleared the first stage once, that coming way back in Tournament 5. But right now, Philly Season is on the Pharaoh's box. He's going to complete the obstacle. It's not often we see him beat a third obstacle, but he does so today. Philly Season onto the Jumping Spider. He has faced this twice in the past. Back in, when it was first introduced, Philly Season. Looking into the fourth fledge, can he get the drop? No, he can't! He hits the wall and it pushes him away from where he needed to land. Ah, tough break. But next up, we have Disappoint making his debut. Hopefully, he won't be disappointing and get far in the course. And we're gonna jump ahead to the Jumping Spider. Disappoint, can he get through this obstacle on his debut? He's gonna get a slide into the first sledge, heading into the third. We just saw Philly give, go out here, but not disappoint as he enters the Eclipse Prism. Disappoint is going to get through the Eclipse Prism nicely. Disappoint heading to the warp wall. Can he get up the wall in one on his debut? We've seen a lot of newcomers do really good here, but can he clear? Can he be the first newcomer this tournament to clear? Disappoint is going to dismount on the right side of the Joust Flash. Look, looking down the corner jump. Who misses it? And he's gonna miss it again and falls in the water. Disappoint. It's disappointed himself on the Joust Clash, but a good run nevertheless. But next up, we have another newcomer. This is Woob Woo. This is one of two of my real life friends. The next Nexus will be running after him, but Woob Woo is taking a lot of time on this first step. And he's looking at the crowd, and he's been on this obstacle for 45 seconds, and he's finally through it. Woo woo, eyeing down the hazard bar. Can he get through this? Oh, oh no. Oh no. Look, I know you're my friend and all, 
but that was terrible. How do you fail like that? He doesn't even get close to the bar. Oh, oh no. Uh, well, hopefully the next of my real life friends does way better than that. Let's see how Nexus does on his Spartan Sasuke debut. He'll have 110 seconds. Let's see how he does. He's into the first one nicely with a slide. Going much more quickly into the second step. A lot more urgent than Woo Blue, which is very nice to see. Anyways, Nexus nearing the end of the diamond steps. Nexus is going to complete the first obstacle. But can he get through the hazard bar? He is struggling with this a lot in practice, but he gets the crouch jump nicely. Nexus heading into the Pharaoh's box, eyeing down the jump. Taking his time, he goes for it. Nexus is going to come up short of the first ledge. Ah, tough break on the Pharaoh's box. But next up, we had Pizza Macho failed the first step. Brown and Ghetto failed the jumping spider. Miles Wolf LG Bad fails the Pharaoh's box. Cold Nightshade fails the jumping spider. Comes up short of the first ledge. And then DJ Easy Slit fails the hazard bar. And now we come up onto competitor number 60, who was another veteran from Spartan Sasuke's past. Returning for the first time since Tournament 14 is Patty Freakin. Patty has been around since the first tournament. Using his experience from the MCC, he was quickly able to find success on Spartan Sasuke. He has cleared the first stage four times and the second stage twice in Tournaments 2 and 7. But after a shocking early exit in Tournament 8, he would not compete again until Tournament 12, where he would once again fail the first stage. After putting on an even worse performance in Tournament 14, Patty disappeared from the course. Now, over four years later, Patty Freakin has returned to Spartan Sasuke. Recently, Patty has been very active in the jumping community and is wanting to get back into the swing of fiends here on, on Halo Infinite. Patty, he's put in a lot of practice for this tournament. He wants to make a statement and clear stage one for the first time in six years. It has been six years. March 2017 is when Tournament 7 was uploaded. Patty free freaking looking to clear stage one for the fifth time. Patty going quickly for the Pharaoh's bots as he gets nicely through. Now for the jumping spider. He has failed this once before in Tournament 5. Let's see if Patty can get through it today. It's been a long time since Patty has faced the jumping spider, but but Patty is urgently through the jumping spider. And now for the Eclipse Prism, gets a big jump up, and he's gonna make it across the Eclipse Prism. On now to the warp wall, can Patty freaking get up the warp wall? Patty is gonna make it up in one, and he's going to enter the Joust Clash. He's got plenty of time, Patty is gonna make it into the ledge, punches the wall, he is a little worried about this corner jump. He misses it on his first go, and then makes it up on his second attempt nicely. Patty Freaking's got two obstacles left. Can he be our third clear? It's been a while since we've seen a clear. Glow comes at number 12. Can Patty be the third this tournament to clear? He's nearing the end of the pit stop. Patty Freaking, nicely done. 30 seconds going into the rope jungle. Looking into the second. The third. Looking into the fourth. Now for the fifth. Patty Freaking, he's gonna do it. Patty Freaking has cleared stage one for the first time in six years. Well done, Patty Freaking. I knew you could do it. Patty Freaking is back. He is back and has made a statement here. He is here to stay. Patty Freaking on his return to Spartan Sasuke has made it a big one. He has cleared stage one for his fifth time and will be moving on to the second stage. Well done, Patty Freakin! Moving on to the next stage. But now we have Sane the Legend making his 12th appearance. He missed the last tournament, but on his last appearance, he failed the Captain's Wing, but the 
Tournament before that, he cleared Sage 1 for his first time since Tournament 3. And now looking to clear Sage 1 for the third time, Sane the Legend. Let's see how he does. He has made it really far as far as the last obstacle Stage 3 on Ninja Warrior of Halo, but has never defeated Stage 2 on Spartan Sasuke. But he needs to get there for Sane the Legend nicely for the first three obstacles. Sane the Legend, now for the Jumping Spider, let's see how he does here, Sane, he has failed the Jumping Spider multiple times in the past, but he's handling it nicely so far, Sane the Legend, eyeing down the big drop, he gets the jump up, and Sane makes it across, now for the Eclipse Prism, can he defeat this obstacle, Sane the Legend, gets the safe jump, and he's going to defeat yet another obstacle, he's got a minute left going into the warp wall, Saying the legend is going to make it up the wall in one. Now for the joust slash Saying the legend. Let's see how he does on this mongoose obstacle. He has faced mongoose obstacles in the past, but now Saying the legend makes it through this one. 40 seconds going into the pit stop. Eyeing down his third clear. He's so close, but he cannot make a mistake now. Saying the legend looking into the third cone. Quickly into the fourth one as he gets multiple safe jumps on the fourth one And he's going to defeat the pit stop nicely on now to the rope jungle But no saying the legend comes up short of the first rope Saying the legend was so close to clearing this first stage He has failed getting into the first rope of the rope jungle he went for it, but his feet hit below where he needed to land, did not get the height he needed. But now we have newcomer Tun V101. Let's see how Tun V101 does on his debut. Heading towards the Jumping Spider, let's see how he does here. Tun, he's gonna make it into the second ledge, quickly into it. Into the third ledge, taking his time going into the fourth ledge. Runs into the drop and Tun V101 is heading to the Eclipse Prism. Tun is across another obstacle, another newcomer onto the warp wall. Let's see how he does here. Tun V101 is going to make it up in one. Now for the Joust Clash. Let's see if he can get through this. Tun V101, can he get out in time? Yes, he can. Tun V101 having a little bit of trouble, trouble with that. He almost slips off the corner jump but he makes it across and now for the pit stop let's see if he can be our fourth finisher he's gonna use the tires and he's gonna slip off the second one ah uh, good run but comes to an end on the hands of the pit stop but now from one newcomer to the next next up we have bowling 1124 this guy's been waiting a long time to run and now making his debut here on halo infinite let's see how he does bowling He's going to take his time going into the third step of the diamond steps. Bowling is heading to the hazard bar. Let's see how he does. Bowling gets a good jump into it. As he enters the a Pharaoh's box. I almost called it the Eclipse Prism. But into the Pharaoh's box. Bowling is going to overshoot the second ledge. Much like jammy elements. Almost an exact replica. But now we have Gotenks. The regular on his 17th appearance, he is 0 for 16 on the first stage in the last tournament. He failed the Jumping Spider, the same obstacle he failed in his Tournament 7 debut. But this guy, he has seen heartbreak after heartbreak on this course. He's come close to clearing Stage 1 so many times, but has never been able to get the job done. Can Gotenks finally lay the narrative to rest here on Halo Infinite? Can Gotenks finally clear first stage on Spartan Sasuke? He has cleared the first stage recently on Irish Warrior. Can he do the same on Spartan Sasuke? Gotenks, now for the Jumping Spider. This is where he failed in the last tournament. Gotenks, can he defeat it today? No, he cannot! Gotenks once again out on the Jumping Spider. He can't even get into the first ledge this time. Oh, Gotenks 0 for 17. And then we had the Evil Queen, who failed the Diamond Steps. It's Merc Remix, fails the Pharaoh's Box. Laika the Goat was not a goat on the Hazard Bar. Danny ZEU falls off the pallet of the Jumping Spider. 
And then Spodium at number 69 fails the steps. And that leads us on to Farisu Koto at number 70. The guy who's competed on American Ninja Warrior, he last competed in Tournament 20 where he beat the Jumping Spider. Missed both the previous two tournaments, tournaments but now returns for Tournament 23. Let's see how Faripu does. Faripu, he's nicely through the first obstacle. Heading into the hazard bar. Ooh, almost slips off, but he's able to make it through. Heading into the Pharaoh's box. He has failed the third obstacle in the past, which was the TIE Fighter in Tournament 19. But now Farisu Toto heading to the Jumping Spider. The obstacle he has failed in both of his first two appearances. Let's see if he can make it 2 for 4 here on the Jumping Spider. Faripu into the first ledge nicely. Eyeing down the second ledge. Faripu. Ooh, almost comes up short, but he's not going to make it into the third ledge. Did not feel comfortable in that inside portion, and it has cost him. And that brings us to 30 competitors left to take on the first stage. Three people have cleared so far. Let's see how our remaining 30 competitors do as the sun begins to set. Next up, we have Soul Reaper 1025. The regular from Britland, he's getting good luck from his fellow British competitor, Hunter Unit 751, the All-Star Soul Reaper. Is yet to clear Stage 1 here on Spartan Sasuke, looking to do so here on Halo Infinite. Will today be the day, Soul Reaper? He's across the hazard bar nicely, an obstacle he has not faced before. He made his debut in Tournament 16, and now Soul Reaper Heading to the Jumping Spider where he did fail in his Tournament 16 debut. So let's see if he can get onto the Jumping Spider. We just saw Farisu Koto go out here, but Soul Reaper is heading through it with urgency. Gets the jump up and he's able to make the drop nicely. Soul Reaper now for the Eclipse Prism. Can he make it across? Yes he can! Soul Reaper heading to the Warped Wall. Can he get up the wall in one? He timed up on the warp wall in tournament 20 where it was the last obstacle but he's able to get up it in two this time with a lot more time of course but now soul reaper 50 seconds left as he barely makes it into the joust clash he almost came up short of that ledge but soul reaper is gonna get a safe jump across on the corner jump and he's got 40 seconds for the last two obstacles now for the pit stop 40 seconds it may seem like a long time but these jumps are a little tougher than they were on Halo 5. You want every second you can get here on these last two obstacles. And he's got 25 seconds left for the rope jungle. He is nearing the end of the stage. Can Soul get the job done? He's got two more ropes left to go. One more rope. Come on, Soul. Just needs to dismount and Soul is across. Yeah. Let's go. Nice, Let's go, Soul. Soul. Way to go, Soul! Yeah! Well done, Soul. That is awesome. The happiest yes. man in the world to move to Halo Infinite. Soul Reaper 1025. <laughs> New me! Soul Reaper 1025. It was a near disaster on the Joust Clash, but he makes it through to pick up his first clear on Spartan Sasuke and does so in the first Halo Infinite tournament. Yo, I don't That's care awesome what anyone stuff. says. F***ing Infinite's the best Halo ever. Soul Reaper, nicely done. Let's see if Volcanic Crowd 5 can follow suit on Soul's success. Volcanic Crowd, this is another guy who has made it far on the first stage multiple times in the past, but has not been able to pick up that clear. He has been able to clear on Halo Ninja Warrior. Now looking to find that success on Spartan Sasuke. Volcanic Crowd heading into the hazard bar. He's going to make it across. The man from Taiwan heading into the Pharaoh's box. At least I hope he's from Taiwan. If I'm wrong, please correct me. But Volcanic Crowd is going to make it through the Pharaoh's box. And now Volcanic into the Jumpy Spider. Eyeing down the jump. Can he make it across? Volcanic. He oh no! He slips off the first ledge! Oh, what a shame! Oh, I thought he had it too. But next up we have Spinny37. He's making his 16th appearance. He is 0 for 15 on the first stage. 
not quite as long as Gotenks' losing streak, but it is a long losing streak nevertheless. We did see his friend, or brother, I don't, I can't remember which it is. Please remind me what it is, actually, but like, Spinny, we did see Potato Jube earlier. But now Spinny 37, through the first three obstacles, doing much better than the first obstacle. Spinny actually has failed the first obstacle multiple times in the past, but now Spinny 37 is into the Jumpy Spider, gets a safe jump. Wearing number 73 in the run order, the opposite of 37, which is why I put him this high in the run order. But he gets a safe jump on that drop. As Spinny37 enters the Eclipse Prism, can he make it across? No, he can't. He get, jumps very early there. Way too early, and he comes up well short of the ledge. But next up, we have a Vows of Samurai. The veteran, he cleared with two tenths of a second left in Tournament 21. But in the last tournament, he timed up by half a second. Let's see if a Vows can clear for a second time today. Avows the Samurai. Let's see how he does here in Tournament 23 on his fifth appearance. He's not missed a tournament since his debut in Tournament 19. Avows the Samurai heading now into the Pharaoh's Box. Let's see how he does into the first ledge. Heading into the second, but no! Avows is going to come up short of the second ledge. That's a shocker. Avows, what went wrong here? It looked, he got a weird jump off. It looked like he might have potentially gotten a little close to the wall. And he just clipped the ledge. That is very unfortunate. Uh, let's see. Let's see if Super Ninja Jake 2 can fare better than that. Super Ninja Jake 2 on his fourth appearance has never failed the first stage. And now heading into the Jumpy Spider. Gets a big launch up on the pallet. Like some of our other competitors earlier, but Super Ninja Jake is looking into the third ledge. He gets into it, heading into the fourth ledge. Jake into the fifth ledge nicely. Super Ninja Jake heading into the Eclipse Prism. But, he, but this guy, he made his debut in Tournament 20. He was the very first person with number one in the run order, order to clear Stage 1 in Tournament 20. And he has not failed the first stage since. He... Does not get up the warp wall in one, though. Let's see if he can get up it in two. No, he can't. He's got 50 seconds left, so he still has enough time if he can get up it here. Yes, he can. 45 seconds left. Should be enough time, but he's got to make sure he can get through these remaining obstacles. He's into the joust slash nicely. He's going to go to the right side. Let's see if he can get the corner jump. Yes, he can. Super Ninja Jake, 30 seconds left. He needs to make it through these last two obstacles. Will he do it? He is starting to run low on time. He probably needs to pick up the pace here on these last two obstacles. But Jake, no! Gets a bad jump on that third one. And Super Ninja J2 fails for his first time. And that is followed up by Clone Trooper 117 failing to Pharaoh's boss. And then a slew of a jumping spider fails, beginning with Pokey Sam 117. Rap Scallion. And then at number 79, we had. Fox McCloud, who fails that obstacle, but now we have Mighty Max 80 at number 80 in the run order. This guy put on a very shocking fail in the last tournament. He failed the warp wall, failing stage 1 for the first time since tournament 15. And now Mighty Max 80 looking to get some revenge here on Halo Infinite. Let's see if he can pick up another clear. Mighty Max 80. He's looking for his 10th clear on the first stage. He had a spree of three clears in a row from tournaments 11 through 13, and then a spree of six in a row from tournaments 16 through 21. Will today be the start of another streak? We'll have to find out. Mighty Max 80 is going to hit the reset switch for the Jumping Spider. Still got plenty of time. Let's see, enters into the second ledge. Mighty Max, he has failed the Jumping Spider in the past. But can he get through it today, Mighty Max? Yes, he can. Now for the Eclipse Prism. Let's see how he does here. Mighty Max. Nicely through another obstacle. On out to the warp wall where he failed in the last tournament. He's up and won, but unlike the last tournament, this is not the end of the stage. Mighty Max now must face the Joust Slash. Mighty Max, he has faced Mondry's obstacles like the vehicle swing in the past, and he's looking like he's going to get through the Joust Slash nicely. 
Mighty Max now for the pit stop. An obstacle he's beaten twice before. Can he do it again here in Tournament 23? Mighty Max quickly into the fourth one. Gets a nice safe jump. Gets another one looking into the last one. Mighty Max gets a safe jump. But Mighty Max comes up short of the dismount. Oh no. Mighty Max 80 comes up short of the dismount of the pit stop. And once again, Mighty Max 80 fails stage one. This time going out on the pit stop. An obstacle he's beaten in both the previous two tournaments. It fails it today. Oh, that is so disappointing to see Mighty Max fail again. Now we have 20 competitors left to take on the first stage. Next up, the regular Sakeshi. He's at number 81 in the run order. You might be wondering why Sakeshi is this high in the run order. That's because he and our next two competitors are winners of the Tournament 23 Lottery. Newcomers and regulars were eligible to do the Tournament 23 Lottery for a chance to have a higher number in the run order, and Sakeshi is one of the three lucky winners of the lottery. It's similar to Ninja Warrior of Halo's 21's lottery, but Sakeshi now for the Jumping Spider. Sakeshi has been playing a lot of Fall Guys. He did compete in the last tournament. Sakeshi into the fourth ledge. Into the fifth ledge. Sakeshi almost comes up short of the dismount, but he's going to make it across. And now for the Eclipse Prism. Almost slides off. A close call there as well, but Sakeshi putting on a really good run. He's setting himself a personal best here on Spartan Sasuke as he fails to get up the warp wall in one. Can Sakeshi get up the wall in two? Sakeshi, yes he can! Can Sakeshi clear the first stage? He has cleared it once on Hunter's course, but can he do so here on Spartan Sasuke? No, he can't! Sakeshi comes up short of the ledge of the Joust Flash. Ah, tough break, Sakeshi. But next up, we have a legend from Jumping's Pass. This is Drago, his back. He last competed in Tournament 19, where he failed the Jumping Spider. The same obstacle he failed in his debut in Tournament 6. But Drago, back for his fifth appearance, has not put in a lot of practice for this tournament, but the practice he has put in, he looked very promising. And now, Drago looks to do something he has not been able to do since the days of the Xbox 360. Clear a first stage. Drado now for the Jumping Spider where he's failed twice in the past. Can Drado beat this obstacle today? Drado gets a safe jump on the first ledge, heading into the second ledge. Now for the third, the fourth. Can he get the drop down? Drado! Yes he can! Drado! Now for the Eclipse Prism. He's gonna get the jump across. He's got 64 seconds as he heads into the warp wall. Can he beat the wall? Drago up it in one. Now for the just Joust Flash. We just saw Sakeshi go out here, but can Drago make it across? Yes, he can. Drago is onto the ledge nicely. Gets the corner jump. Drago looking to get his first clear on a jumping course in nearly nine years. Can he do it? He's two obstacles away. Oh, gets a huge safe, safe jump on the second cone of the pit stop. And he's moving urgently for the rest of the obstacle as he enters the final obstacle, the rope. Jungle, no, Drago! Fails the final obstacle, the rope, jungle. Drago, more heartbreaking than his flying shoot fail in Tournament 7. It was one obstacle away from clearing. But like saying earlier, his, jump, his feet was too low as he goes for the jump. Drago... Oh, that is heartbreaking. Ah, would have loved to see him clear. Up next, we have the last of our lottery winners. This is Eternal Flame 395, the newcomer. Let's see how he does. Skipping ahead to the jumping spider. Eternal Flame on his debut on Spartan Sasuke. Ooh, a little bit of bad camera work there. But nevertheless, Eternal Flame is going to make it for the Jumping Spider nicely. Eternal Flame has got 70 seconds for the Eclipse Prism, and he's going to make it across Eternal Flame. Can he make it up the warp wall? Eternal, he's up the wall in one as he enters the Joust Clash. 
Eternal Flame, we saw Sakeshi go out here, but he's gonna jump to the right side like a couple of our competitors. But Eternal Flame, he's putting on a really good run so far. Looking to clear Stage 1 today. He's two obstacles away. Can he do it? He's looking good here on the pit stop. Gets a safe jump on the fourth cone. He's got plenty of time for this last obstacle. Don't pull a Drago! Oh no, he's just dead! Oh no! Eternal Flame, another competitor out on the rope jungle. Ah, uh, he just comes up short of the first rope. This obstacle has been deadly, and Eternal Flame becomes another victim. Next to take on the course is Nas, a fan favorite competitor who reached the final stage of Halo Ninja Warrior 9. Snaz has been competing on Spartan Sasuke since the first tournament. His first clear came in Tournament 3, however, he would fail Stage 1 in his next 16 appearances. In the last tournament, Snaz finally broke the losing streak and cleared Stage 1 for the second time. On Stage 2, he would fail mounting into the drop salmon ladder. Nah. Now, Snaz enters Halo Infinite coming off his biggest run on Spartan Sasuke. Will Snaz be able to ride high on his success, or will he fall in the water again? No matter what happens, Snaz is going to give it his all here in Tournament 23. He's a very dedicated competitor on his 21st appearance. He's only missed Tournaments 5 and 6, but he's one of the most active members in this community. Genuinely one of the nicest people you can meet on S-Boss. On Xbox and now Snaz nicely through the Pharaoh's box as he enters the Jumping Spider, an obstacle he has failed multiple times in the past. Can Snaz beat the Jumping Spider today? Snaz is gonna get into the first ledge nicely. Now for the second ledge, almost comes up short, but gets the slide jump. Now for the fourth ledge, Snaz he puts in he's put in a lot of practice for this tournament. Will it pay off again, much like the last tournament? Now for the Eclipse Prism, Snaz through another obstacle, he's got a minute left into the warp wall, let's see how he does here, Snaz is gonna get up the wall in one, he's got plenty of time left for the Joust Clash, Ooh, having a little trouble getting into that mongoose, there he goes, anyway Snaz gets into the ledge nicely, can he get this corner jump, yes he can, gets the safe jump, but now for the pit stop, this is the obstacle he was the most worried about. But can he get through it? Snaz. Wow. No, he's not. He's going to overshoot of it. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> no, no. Snaz. He overshoots the first one. Oh, not the way he wanted to go out. And the pit stop takes out yet another competitor. The next veteran to take on the course is Crown Ferret 19. He is the host of Irish Warrior and has recently uploaded his first Halo Infinite tournament. Irish made his debut in Tournament 14 and has not missed a tournament since. In Tournament 19, he would pick up his first clear on Stage 1 and would follow that up with another clear in Tournament 20. After failing Stage 1 in Tournament 21, he would get his revenge in the last tournament and set a personal best going out on the medal spin on Stage 2. Now, Crown Ferret 19, he has returned for his landmark 10th appearance on Spartan Sasuke. Irish would love to continue his success here on Halo Infinite. We'll see how he does here in Tournament 23. I got to Stage 3 on his first Halo Infinite Tournament. Let's see if he can get to Stage 3 on the first Halo Infinite Tournament of Spartan Sasuke. Irish has made it to the third stage on Halo Ninja Warrior. We have seen he is capable of beating Stage 2's, but he's got to get there first. Crown Fair has got a tough first stage to get through. Only four competitors have beaten this first stage so far, but Crown Fair at 19 is heading through the Pharaoh's box. On now to the Jumping Spider. Let's see if he can get through this. Crown Ferret. He's into the Jumping Spider nicely, looking into the second ledge. Now for the third ledge. Nice, into the fourth ledge. Now for the drop, Irish! It's a safe jump, but no! Irish is out on the jumpy spider! He safe jumps and falls in the water. It looked like he hit his head, and it knocks him down. Let's see what happened here on the jumping spider. 
He goes down. He gets a safe jump, but it looks like he overcorrected, maybe, and falls off the other side. Oh, Irish, not the way he wanted to start an infinite. Uh, but now we are down to 15 competitors left to take on stage one. As it is nighttime here, as TNC Noodles makes his, makes his first appearance since Tournament 17. He was formerly known as Hot Asians, but now he is back here as number 86, filling in for one of two competitors who missed out this tournament. Those two being Tricky Cyrus and Weapon Map. Unfortunately, they could not show up, but somebody had to fill in their spots. Their spots and. Noodles is one of the two people filling in their spots. But right now, TNC Noodles has been a little more active recently, has signed up for the latest season of the Halo Basketball League. But let's see how he does. He was war number one in Tournament 12. Let's see how he does on the Jumpy Spider. Can he get through it? We just saw Irish go out here, but can TNC Noodles get through the Jumpy Spider? TNC Noodles, he's looking really good on this first stage as he gets through the Jumping Spider. Avenges Irish's fail as he enters the Eclipse Prism. Noodles on a personal best as he enters the Warp Wall. Can he get up it in one? TNC Noodles, no he cannot. He cannot get up the Warp Wall in one. Can he get up the Warp Wall in two? Yes he can. TNC Noodles now onto the Joust Clash. He's got three obstacles left as he's got 40 seconds left on the clock. He gets into the first ledge nicely. Can he get the corner jump? Oh no. Noodles slips off the ledge as he tries going for the corner jump. Oh, that is very unfortunate. He got the hard part done but could not get the easy part done. It's a mix of nervousness and confidence uh, because this is a new game. First time that we've had Sergeant Sasuke on a new game. Uh, so it's going to be very interesting to see how many people adjust to it. The jumping is so much different on Infinite, and I think there's different levels of confidence with a lot of people. I've, I first felt really different because it felt a lot more stiff. Uh, however, as I've been jumping on this course especially, I felt a little bit more confident. I would like to beat Stage 1 today, um, but funnily enough, the one obstacle that I'm struggling with is the, the Mongoose obstacle. It doesn't even involve jumping, but we'll see. We'll see how I do. I, I'm excited to see the, the new era of Burns last game. Next up is the All-Star Alpha Puma, making his 21st appearance last tournament, he cleared Stage 1 for his 10th time. He failed the double compressor in the last tournament, failing to get into that second compressor. But now Alpha Puma looking to get clear number 11 here on the first Halo Infinite tournament. He was a little hesitant whether he wanted to compete on Infinite or not, but he has returned for Tournament 23. And Puma's going to look to try to make the best of it here in Spartan Sasuke 23 as he's into the Pharaoh's box. Into the third ledge nicely, Alpha Puma. Now for the Jumpy Spider. Let's see if he can get for this. He has failed the Jumpy Spider in the past. Hopefully he won't fail it today. He gets into the first ledge nicely. Heading into the second ledge. Third ledge, he's into it, but walks off the back of the third ledge! Alpha Puma is out on the Jumping Spider! Uh, in a fail very reminiscent to an epic Reshiram in Tournament 6. He, slip, he jumps off the back, but now Alpha Puma slips off the back of the third ledge of the Jumping Spider. Not the way he wanted to go out. Oh no! He just walks off the back of it! That is such a shame to see him go out like that! A little uneasy. It's it's a new game. It's there's always gonna be a a little bit of rust and a little bit of a skill gap for the first tournament after you go to a new game. So to be honest, I don't have a lot of expectations for this. I'd love to beat stage one, but honestly, if I can just make it to a deep stage one, just make a good run, I'll be happy because I know there's every possible possibility that I don't clear. The first member of the new stars to run is Patrilla Fam Four. Petrillo made his debut in Tournament 16, and his first clear came in Tournament 19, where he got deep into the third stage. In Tournament 20, Petrillo made it to the final stage, going out on the Salmon Ladder. He nearly made it back there in Tournament 21, but would tragically slip off the Pipe Slider. 
But in the last tournament, Petrillo had a very shocking fail going out on the double compressor in Stage 2. Petrillo would love to pick up some momentum here in Halo Infinite after a bit of a slump at the end of Halo 5. He failed the first stage of Irish Warrior three tournaments in a row before clearing again in his most recent tournament. We know Patrol is capable of bouncing back, but can he do it here on Spartan Sasuke? But if he wants a chance to stage 2 revenge, he needs to get through stage 1. Patrol now looking to beat him for the 5th tournament in a row as he he heads through the hazard bar. Patrillo into the... It uh, not the... The Pharaoh's box. Blech. Patrol is through the Pharaoh's box as he enters the jumpy spider. We just saw Puma go out here. Can Patrol make it through? He has failed it twice in the past. But Patrol gets into the first ledge, taking a few safe jumps, wanting to be careful here. He does not want to make a mistake here on the jumpy spider. And Patrillo, his carefulness is going to pay off as he gets for the jumping spider. Patrill heading into the Eclipse Prism almost comes up short, but gets nicely through. And now Patrillo fam into the warp wall. Looking to get up and in one, Patrillo, yes he does. Now for the Joust Clash, Patrillo has not faced a mongoose obstacle on Spartan Sasuke. And Patrillo, it looks like he's gonna get through the Joust Clash. And he does. Patrillo, two obstacles left as he enters the pit stop. He safe jumps onto the first one. Heading into the second. Now for the third. Quickly into the fourth. Another safe jump here. He's got 27 seconds left. Should be enough time. But we've seen a lot of competitors fail this obstacle. The rope jun jungle. It has been deadly. But Patrillo, he is making it up this obstacle. And Patrillo fam four is gonna beat stage one with 10.9 seconds remaining well done patrol fam for the fifth competitor to clear this tournament and clear stage one for his fifth time well done patrol fam for he was very careful here on the jumpy spider did not want to pull an alpha puma it was a near disaster here on the Eclipse Prism, but he gets a nice safe jump and recovers to clear stage one once again. Well done, Patrillo Fam 4. Well, obviously it's a new game. Uh, I've had this Xbox for about five hours. Um, I, but I know everything I need to know about this course already to clear it. That is also a joke. I, uh, I'm confident, but never too confident. Also, I have COVID right now while I'm doing this, so uh, Michael Jordan flu gaming coming, I guess. The next competitor to take on the course is the all-star Chumpy. The host of Halo Sasuke and other shows before it, Chumpy made his debut in Tournament 5 and would pick up his first clear in his third appearance in Tournament 7. His next stage 1 clear would wait until tournament 13, but in tournament 14 he would be the only person to clear the second stage. In tournament 19, Chumpy would reach the final stage and would be the first person to attempt the current version of the tower. Chumpy failed the lunatic cliffhanger in 5 of the 6 times he's reached the third stage. However, last tournament was not one of those times as he shockingly failed the hanging hoops on stage 2. Now with the factor factor of college in his life, this means he has much less time to prepare for tournaments, which could have an impact here in Tournament 23, meaning he'll need to rely more on his own skills. Will that carry him to his 8th Stage 1 clear in a row? Chumpy has cleared Stage 1 in 9 of the previous 10 tournaments. If he fails, it would be a massive shock, but he's gonna do his best to keep his streak alive. Last tournament did see the end of his stage 2 streak. He's hoping that his stage 1 streak will not end today. He and Smokey Massacre both have cleared stage 1 in each of the previous 7 tournaments in a row. But Chumpy is going to get a huge launch up on the pallet. And Chumpy is navigating the Jumpy Spider. Can he get through it? Chumpy! Yes he can! Chumpy! On LTD Eclipse Prism, can he get through another obstacle? Chumpy, yes he can. Chumpy onto the warp wall. 
Can he get up the wall? The wall in one. Yes, he can. Ch Chumpy now for the Joust Slash. Another Mongoose obstacle. He likes some of these faced in the past. Let's see how he does here. He gets into the ledge nicely. Can he get the corner jump? He's got 45 seconds left. Should be enough time for these last two obstacles. We just saw patrol of clear. Can Chumpy follow suit? Chumpy into the third, the fourth, the fifth, quickly for the pit stop, and he is into the last obstacle, the rope jungle. He's got a few more jumps left before he clears his first stage. Chumpy into the third one. Looking into the fourth one. Chumpy cannot make it into the fourth one! Chumpy is out on stage one! Chumpy has failed the rope jungle. His stage one streak is over! Chumpy, for the first time since Tournament 15, will not be moving on to Stage 2. Chumpy came so close to clearing Stage 1, but it is this fourth jump in the Rope Jungle that takes him out. Chumpy, no! He just could not get into the jump. Ah, no! Chumpy! Oh my god. I bounced off the pole. That's such a detriment. I bounced off the pole. That's such a shame. I had that. Ah, tough luck, Chumpy. We all wanted to see him clear. It's uh, it feels pretty surreal actually, finally being here on Infinite. You know, it's you know this the whole Spartan Sasuke has been you know Halo Five for like six years, so or seven uh, seven years. Sorry. So, yeah, it feels pretty weird finally being here. For me, <laughs> there's never a good time to have a personal worst result. But if there was one time to do it, it was maybe in the last tournament. Because even though it didn't give me the send-off I wanted, I can come into this tournament with a lot less expectation. Because it's a new game and I don't know what's going to happen. So, let's just give it my best shot. See how far we can get on here on Infinite. Next to take on the course is Hunter Unit 751, the host of the longest running course Ninja Warrior of Halo. Hunter has been competing since the first tournament and put his previous skills to good use. In Tournament 4, he would set his personal best going out on the last obstacle of Stage 3. After making it to the third stage again in Tournament 8, he would not compete again until Tournament 13 where he would fail earlier than expected. His next clear wouldn't come until Tournament 17, but he had a major comeback. In Tournament 21, he put on his best run since the 4th Tournament, going out on the cliffhanger, but in the last tournament, he set a personal worst, going out on the Jumping Spider. Hunter now enters Halo Infinite, looking for revenge on the first stage. He'll be aiming to get his 12th clear on Stage 1 and get deep into the course. Hunter Unit 751, the man who's cleared 19 tournaments in a row on Halo Ninja Warrior. He would love to find success here in Tournament 23. After a rather disappointing run in the last tournament, can Hunter do it again today? Hunter is through the hazard bar onto the Pharaoh's box. Hunter gets into the second ledge nicely. Hunter now for the third ledge. He makes it across, but now this is the obstacle where he failed in the last tournament. This is a jumpy spider. He lines it, he lines it up. Hunter, he gets into the first ledge this time. Nicely done, but he'd love to get through the rest of the obstacle. He's got a couple jumps left. Can he get the drop? Hunter, yes he can. Hunter unit. He has done better than last tournament. He's taking his time going into the Eclipse Prism. And he's got a minute left going into the Warp Wall. Hunter Unit 751. Can he get up the Warp Wall in one? Hunter, he is up the wall in one. And now for the Joust Clash. Hunter, he has failed Mongoose obstacles before. But he gets a nice jump into it. He was a little worried about this obstacle. But Hunter... Taking a lot of safe jumps. Could he be panicking here near the end? Hunter, the pressure might be on, but he's got to make it through now. He's got 25 seconds left. He needs to make sure he's not too slow in these last few obstacles. 
Hunter, less than 20 seconds left. He's gonna need to keep a good pace here on the rope jungle. We just saw Chumpy go out here. Do not pull a Chumpy here. He's got less than 10 seconds. He's into the fourth one, unlike Chumpy. And Hunter unit 751. He's gonna clear with just 1.3 seconds left. He was running low on time, but Hunter unit 751 is going to be our sixth competitor this tournament to clear stage one. Well done to Hunter unit. He was a little slow, but it was good enough to beat the stage. He was a little worried about this Joust Clash, but he makes it through it all to move on to stage two once again. Oh my hey. Christ. Hey. <laughs> nice. Same new course, new game, same old result. Hunters are slow it. And now 10 competitors left to take on stage one. Next up, the veteran could be better. Back for his first time since tournament 19. When we last saw him, he failed the first obstacle, which at the time was the log jam. And like Noodles earlier, he is filling in for Tricky Cyrus and Weapon Matt, who both missed out this tournament. Could be better. That's why he has a number this high. But let's see how he does. He's already done better than his last appearance, at least. Could be better. Has cleared stage one five times in the past, including one run on the third stage. But now, could be better. Now for the Jumping Spider. Let's see how he does here. Phil! He is the Aborigines Grand Champion. He's into the third ledge. Looking into the fourth. Gets a jump. Gets the drop nicely. Could be better. Is heading to the Eclipse Prism. How will Phil do? Phil is across another obstacle. And now heading to the warp wall. Can Phil make it up the wall? Yes he can. Could be better. Heading to the Joust Clash. Can he get through this? Ooh, a little bit of lag here, but he makes it across nicely. Now, looking into the corner jump, he can't get into it his first try. Second try, he still can't get into the ledge. Could be better, he does not make it in the corner jump. Well, everyone told me, Swan, you have to compete, you're an all-star. And I'm like, oh, f man, I ain't made a f stage three since tournament 13. And everyone's still calling me an all-star. So I guess I'll show up and do my best. And uh, I don't know what my number is going to be yet, but I hope it's low because I know I'm going to do bad. So The nighttime course, so I, I'm going to assume it's not Oh, f <laughs> dude. I'm like... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I didn't think about that. Well, despite his pessimism, Swantron 97 is back for his 19th time on Spartan Sasuke. Swan beat Stage 1 in both of the previous two tournaments. Last tournament, he did have a tragic fail on the first obstacle of Stage 2. But now, looking to get back there once again, Swantron 97. The man who's put on the longest Stage 1 clear streak on Spartan Sasuke of 9 in a row. We do have a we have one person that is in contention to get close to that, but we'll get to him later. But Swantron97 is through the Pharaoh's boss. On now to the Jumping Spider, where he's failed in Tournament 20. Let's see if Swan can get through the Jumping Spider today. Swan is quickly into the second ledge. Just a safe jump looking into the third ledge. Gets another safe jump. Swan, he did not know if he was even going to be able to compete this tournament, but he is here for appearance number 19 as he enters the Eclipse Prism. Swan, despite not getting a lot of practice, he's putting on a really good run here as he nears the warped wall. He's got half the time remaining. Swan, he does have the time to clear, but he needs to make sure he gets up, which he does not on his first attempt. Ooh, come on, Swan. He needs to get up the warped wall. Yes, he does. Swan up the wall in two. Now for the Joust Clash. Let's see how he does here. We just saw Phil go out here. Can Swan defeat the Joust Clash? No, he cannot! Swan is out on the Joust Clash. Swantron 97 has failed. He gets out at just the wrong time and just... Well, 
You know what? That wasn't a bad run. Ah, Swan is out on the Joust Clash. But that leads us into the new star. This is Sonic Fan 10193 back for his seventh appearance. Last tournament, he set a personal best, failing the Devil Swing, and now returns for Tournament 23. Skipping ahead to the Jumpy Spider, Sonic Fan. Another weird jump on that palette. We've been seeing that a lot this tournament, but Sonic Fan. He's taking his time here on the Jumpy Spider. He's not less than 70 seconds. Despite being called Sonic Fan, he is being rather careful here. Ooh, he almost comes up short going into the drop, but he gets across with a safe jump. Now for the Eclipse Prism, Sonic Fan gets another safe jump as he enters the warp wall. Sonic Fan only 50 seconds left. Let's see if he can get up the wall in one. He does. Sonic Fan. Now for the Joust Clash. We just saw Swan and Phil go out here. But Sonic Fan is going to get this jump nicely and the corner jump. Sonic Fan, he does have the time left. He's got 32 seconds left, but he's got to make sure he keeps up a good pace here on these last two obstacles. He's into the second cone. Looking into the third one, doing a lot of safe jumps here. He's only down to 20 seconds. He is starting to run low on time. Sonic Fan, he's going to need to pick up the pace here on this last obstacle. The time is ticking. 10 seconds left for Sonic Fan. He's looking into the fourth one. Gets a jump. Into the fifth. And Sonic Fan. Yes, he's through. No oh my way. God. Wow. Bruh. Oh wow. God. Where did I lose That's a all that time? That felt like a really clean run. Sonic Fan clears stage one with only half a second remaining. He had a really weird jump on the jumping spider, but he's able to get the safe jump there. He was a bit slow despite being called Sonic Fan, but it's still good enough to move on to stage two. Well done, Sonic Fan, clearing for a sixth time in a row. So I don't know if I've really had another pre-run experience like this on this course. In the fact to where for basically every previous run I've had on Spartan Sasuke, I feel like I've had some idea of how I'm going to do, whether it actually turns out right or not. But this tournament, I, I just have truly no idea what to expect. I could get deep stage three, I could fail the jumping spider. Anywhere in between, I would not be shocked at all. Next up, the all-star Flamosaurus on his 19th appearance. He made his debut way back in the first tournament, and he is the host of Spartan Ninja Warrior. Now wrapping up his first Halo Infinite tournament, Flamosaurus back for Stage 1. Let's see how he does. Flamosaurus, he failed the Jumping Spider in Tournament 21, but got his revenge in the last tournament and made it to the Cliffhanger on Stage 3. Flamosaurus looking to pick up another clear here in this tournament. Flamosaurus into the third ledge of the Pharaoh's box. And now running to the Jumping Spider. Can he get through this? Flamosaurus. He has failed it in the past, but he's going to get into the first ledge nicely. Flamosaurus looking into the second ledge. Another safe jump. I'm taking a cautious approach, much like Sonic Fan. He does seem to be slightly faster though. Oh, and another close call on the jumping spider drop. But Flamosaurus gets a good safe jump. He's got a minute left going into the Eclipse Prism. Flamosaurus is through this new obstacle. And now for the warp wall. Flame, can he get up the wall in one? He's going to take a shorter run up and he's going to get up the wall in one. Flamosaurus, now for the Joust Clash. Taking his time lining up for it. Can he get through it? Flame is through the jump nicely. And guess that corner jump. Flamosaurus. It's got two obstacles left with 30 seconds remaining. Can he get through it? Flame. He's a lot more urgent on the pit stop, unlike Sonic Fan. That's definitely gonna help him on his time. Flame, he's got 20 seconds for the final obstacle, the rope jungle. Heading up to the second rope. The third rope. The fourth rope. 
Looking into the last one, Flamosaurus. Less than 10 seconds and he's made it through once again. 6.4 seconds remaining on the clock. Flamosaurus, well done. He has defeated stage one for his 14th time on Spartan Sasuke. Nicely done. Flame has done it again. He's had a few close calls on the jumping spider, mainly the drop, but Flamosaurus quickly through the pit stop, and he's gonna move on to the second stage once again. Well done, Flame. God, 20 appearances. Uh, I would like to beat stage 1 again, maybe even get to stage 3 after my ridiculous fail on um, Impressive Climb, but yeah, we'll just see how it goes. Competing for his landmark 20th time is the All-Star Strafe Helix. He made his debut in Tournament 4, and since then he has not missed a tournament. In Tournament 7, Strafe would surprise everyone by reaching the final stage. Although he hasn't made it back there, Strafe would prove himself and become a top competitor. Of the 6 times Strafe Helix reached a cliffhanger, he would beat the cliffhanger all 6 times. After another deep run in Tournament 18, he wouldn't get back to the third stage until the last tournament. After a close call on the Lunatic Cliffhanger, Strafe would fail the next obstacle, the Crescent Climb. Strafe now becomes the fifth competitor to reach 20 appearances on Spartan Sasuke, and only the third person to reach 20 consecutive appearances alongside Smoky Massacre and Fireball. Strafe now looks to continue his momentum going into infinite as he tries to clear stage 1 for the 11th time. Strafe Helix, this is a big tournament for him. His landmark 20th run, let's see how he does. Strafe, he's into the Pharaoh's box, gets a slide into that first ledge. Heading for the second and the third ledges, Strafe Helix. Now running into the jumping spider, Strafe has failed this obstacle multiple times before. Strafe notably has struggled. In, the, in some of the more recent tournaments to get past stage 1, but Strafe Helix looking comfortable here on the Jumping Spider as he heads towards the Eclipse Prism. Strafe nicely through another obstacle as he enters the warp wall. Strafe Helix, he's got 62 seconds left. Strafe Helix up the wall in 1, heading into the Joust Clash. Strafe Three obstacles left till the end of the stage. Strafe is gonna jump out of the mongoose nicely. Strafe running across the ledge, and Strafe is heading to the pit stop. Strafe into the first, the second, the third, the fourth. He's going quickly here on the pit stop, and it is paid off. Strafe Helix onto the last obstacle. This is the Rope Jungle, Strafe Helix has got 30 seconds left, plenty of time, and he's probably going to set the fastest time so far, Strafe Helix is going to do so, with 22.8 seconds. Well done, Strafe Helix has cleared stage 1 for his 11th time, and his second in a row. Nicely done, Strafe Helix. It looked comfortable all throughout the stage. He went fast all throughout and sets the fastest time so far. Well done to Strafe Helix moving on once again on Spartan Sasuke. This is my game! Easy money. Look this at this is guy. My game. Hey. Oh my god. Ah, uh, this tournament. It's a big moment for me. Um, before I came in this tournament about two weeks, well, as of filming about two weeks, I uh, broke my wrist. So I got a cast on this thing right now. I'm going to be jumping with this thing. It's not fun, but it's all I can do. Um, obviously, last time I ran 21, almost won. Uh, my main goal just this tournament is to get through stage one. That would be nice for me. But, um, it's a very tough stage. A lot of new people coming in this game. I'm very excited to see how this thing shapes out. The next member of the new stars is the Apex GD. More commonly known as Joey, he made his debut in Tournament 19 where he failed Stage 1. Going into Tournament 20, Joey put in lots of training and reached the end of the third stage. 
and in Tournament 21, he would defeat the third stage and come closer than anyone since Tournament 13 to achieving total victory, missing out by .78 seconds. Although he missed the last tournament, Joey has been building his jumping resume, having reached the final stage 10 times on top of the one in Spartan Sasuke. Joey has risen to be one of the best jumpers of the modern day, but as he said in his interview, he has a broken wrist, and it's gonna be put to the test here in Spartan Sasuke 23. Very similar case to Fireball in Halo Ninja Warrior 16, where he was forced to use only one hand, but now Joey is gonna try to beat Stage 1 with a broken wrist. Let's see how he does here. Joey nicely through. He's been a top competitor recently. Always putting in lots of practice for every tournament. And he shows he always wants to get far on every tournament he does. And he he wants to sit atop the tower as a grand champion. Anything less than is a disappointment for the Apex JD. And he's quickly through the jumping spider, not taking any moments to rest. And the Apex JD, formerly known as Vase or Joey Davis or whatever you want to call him. He keeps changing his gamer tag all the time. It's something else now, but this is the gamer tag he ran with when he came in to do his run. So, but anyways, the Apex JD struggling a little with this corner jump on the Joust Clash, but he's going to make it across nicely. He's got two obstacles left. He's putting on a very good run despite the broken wrist. Let's see how he handles the pit stop. He's into the third. The fourth gets another safe jump. Ooh, a little bit of a slip up there, but a good recovery from Joey as he enters the last obstacle, the Rogue Jungle. He's got less than 30 seconds. Doesn't look like he's going to have the fastest time, but if he can make it up, it will be a very impressive run given his circumstances. And the Apex JD once again through the first stage with 16.2 seconds remaining. Joey Davis has cleared stage one for his third time. And after missing the last tournament, he did not let that affect him. And C clears once again. The Apex JD struggled a little with this corner jump on the Joust Clash. But he and the pit stop, but he was able to make up for it by clearing the first stage once again. Well done, Joey. We will see you on the second stage. Yeah, since this is a new game, there's uh, so many wild cards. You know, it's totally new physics. Um, I'm just hoping to you know come out here and get a stage one clear and uh, you know start the Halo Infinite saga off. You know, with the, with the clear. The next all-star to run is the man, the myth, the legend, Ump Double Ump. The longest active member of the jumping community, he first reached the final stage of Spartan Sasuke in the third tournament, and would follow that up in Tournament 4 by becoming the first competitor on Spartan Sasuke to achieve total victory. Ump would reach the final stage two more times, in Tournament 7 and 13. Although he came up short both times, Ump holds the record for the most final stage attempts in Spartan Sasuke. After producing one of the most shocking fails in Tournament 19, he would take a break before returning in the last tournament, and he came back in glory as he produced another deep run into the third stage going out on the Iron Thrones. Halo 5 proved to be Ump Double Ump's highest point in his jumping career, and he looks to continue that momentum going into Infinite. Ump enters Tournament 23 with confidence. He believes he can get back to the final stage, but he's down a long way to go before he gets there, and now he'll be looking to clear Stage 1 for the 14th time. Let's go Ump! 18th appearance, let's see how he does. Now for the Hazard Bar, similar to the Butterfly Wall, he's never actually faced the Hazard Bar before, but he gets through that today. Ump double, ump double Ump heading through the Pharaoh's Box. Ump Double Ump, prior to his fail in Tournament 19, has never finished below 7th place. That just comes to show the skill Ump has when it comes to Spartan Sasuke. Excuse me. Anyways, Ump Double Ump. 
through the jumping spider again as he enters the Eclipse Prism. How will we handle the new obstacle? Whiffies! Ump, double ump. Now for the warp wall. Can he get up the wall in one ump? Yes, he can! Ump, double ump. He got a new Xbox recently going into this tournament. So, would, could that be a factor here in his run in Tournament 23? He is doing pretty good so far as he's two obstacles away from clearing Stage 1. He's on to the pit stop. He gets a safe jump on the first one. He gets another safe jump on the second one, looking into the third. Taking a very cautious approach. Another safe jump on that third one. He is does look like he is struggling a little bit here on the pit stop, but he is in control, which is very important. Ump double ump. One obstacle away from defeating stage one. He's on to the third rope. Ump into the fourth rope. Looking into the fifth rope and ump double ump has cleared again. Ten seconds flat. Ump double ump has cleared stage one for his 14th time on Spartan Sasuke. Well done, ump double ump. Getting through the hazard bar. As I said, a very similar obstacle to the butterfly wall overcoming those demons from Tournament 19. But Ump Double Ump is moving on to Stage 2 once again. One of Spartan Sasuke's best competitors moving on to the second stage on Halo Infinite. Next to take on the course is Sunny Side Splash. Sunny made his debut in Tournament 20 where he came close to beating Stage 1 going out on mix and match. In Tournament 21, he would get his first clear and would reach the third stage where he failed the Curtain Kling Kai. In the last tournament, he beat that obstacle and then shocked everyone by getting to his very first final stage on a jumping course. However, the celebration was short-lived as he produced the earliest fail on Spartan Sasuke's final stage. After his success, Sunny Side Splash has become the fifth member of the New Stars. This is a guy who made his debut after thousands of runs have been made at Spartan Sasuke, and for him to reach the amount of success he has in such a short amount of time is remarkable. But now the pressure is on. After coming off a final stage attempt in the last Halo 5 tournament, he'll be looking to clear stage 1 for the third tournament in a row and Sunny Side Splash nicely through the diamond steps and the hazard bar. Sunny Side Splash onto the Pharaoh's box. He gets a safe jump on that second ledge. Sunny Side and number 98 in the run order. He's got a lot to live up to after. His run in the last tournament, hopefully the pressure won't get to him. Sunny Side Splash, he has never failed the Jumping Spider before, and he's made it there in every one of his appearances, looking to go 4 for 4 on this obstacle, which he does. Sunny Side Splash, now for the Eclipse Prism. Can he get through this new obstacle? Gets the safe jump on the cylinder, and yes he does. Sunny's got a minute left for the warp wall, he's got 4 obstacles left. Sunny Side Splash makes it up the warp wall in one. Sunny Side Splash now for the Joust Splash. He's got three obstacles left and he's into the ledge nicely. Can he get the corner jump? He gets a very comfortable jump. Now 40 seconds left heading into the pit stop. Sunny he lands on the tire of the first one. He is not doing any safe jumps. This is a very risky move here on the pit stop, not safe jumping. Especially with such fin jumps, but Sunnyside is gonna make the most of it. He's got one obstacle left, the rope jungle. Now looking into the third rope. He's got 14 seconds left. Should be enough time as long as he doesn't stall around too long. Sunny is gonna clear again. 6.7 seconds left. The pressure will not get to him on the first stage. Sunny Side Splash becomes our 12th person to clear stage 1 this tournament, and he clears for the third tournament in a row. The stage 4 finalist from the last tournament is moving on here in tournament 23. He's lived up to the expectations, and he'll be taking his run into the second stage. Well done, Sunny Side Splash. Coming off of Halo 5, 
Uh, I was pretty hot on Spartan Sasuke and a lot of the other courses, so I'd, I'd love to, to carry this into the new game. Obviously, for 15 Stage 1 clears, 15 being my favorite number, uh, I would love to, to get through Stage 1 and see myself on Stage 2. Um, as far as Stage 1 goes, um, I'm not really too worried about anything. Um, that Mongoose dismount is something that I've struggled with in the past, at least in practice, so I'm a little worried about that. Um, but we're just going to see how fast I can go. That's what I always do. And hopefully I see myself on stage two. The next to last competitor to take on stage one is Fireball ZXZ. One of only two people to compete in every tournament of Spartan Sasuke. In tournament eight, Fireball reached the final stage for the first time. Then he failed the final jump of the pipe slider in tournament 11. And for a long time, he could not get back there. From tournament 16 through 21, he would fail the fifth obstacle of the third stage four times. But in the last tournament, Fireball finally defeated the third stage once again. But just like tournament 8, he ran out of time before reaching the top of the tower. Fireball ZHC, the Shingo of Spartan Sasuke now returns for his 23rd time. He achieved total victory on Halo Ninja Warrior, but Fireball is still searching for that here on this course, still aiming for the $100 prize to start up his hot dog stand. Fireball will be going for his 15th clear on the first stage. Let's see if he can do it. Fireball is one of Jumpy's best competitors, and now he's on to the hazard bar. Fireball through that and now for the pharaoh's box going quickly through it he did say he was gonna go for speed here but it did cost bush case earlier he did try going for a lot of speed and he did end up failing hopefully that won't be the case with fireball not taking any moments to breathe on the jumping spider look at him go speedy gonzalez entering the eclipse prism through another obstacle, and it's got 70 seconds for the warp wall, up it in one. Was there any doubt? Fireball into the Joust Clash. Can he get the jump out? Yes, he can, and another quick jump on the corner jump. He's got 55 seconds left. He's trying to get the fastest time this tournament, not stopping on the pit stop. Fourth, fifth, and Fireball. He's got one obstacle left. And he's into the first one, the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth. And look at the clock! Fireball clears with 35.7 seconds left on the clock. That is amazing! Fireball with the fastest stage one clear since tournament one. That is unbelievable. Fireball clears with well over 30 seconds remaining. I still cannot believe it. Look at this technique on the warp wall. He does kind of a weird jump there, but he makes it through. Get rid of Fireball. Just get Good him out. Lord. Get him what out. Was it? Oh. Don't you dare, don't you dare. Let's go. You bastard. 35. Now he's too fast. Oh my God. <laughs> he has 13 seconds less than you. That's ridiculous. Man, last tournament, you know, we ended Halo 5. I was really hoping to end it on the final stage, but couldn't quite pull it off. This tournament, it's it's Halo Infinite. It's a brand new game. It's a new year. I feel like this is the perfect opportunity to make a good first impression in a completely new realm of Halo jumping. So I really want to beat Stage 1. That's the most important thing to me, this tournament. We'll see where we go from there, but... I'm, uh, I'm a little nervous going into the stage one, probably more nervous than I've been on a stage one in a while. I don't think it's the hardest stage one that you've had in a while, but uh, yeah, I'm still, I just really don't want to make a simple mistake here on the new game. The final competitor to take on the first stage is a two-time champion and host of Halo Ninja Warrior, Smokey Massacre. Smokey has competed in every tournament of Spartan Sasuke, and right away he was a top competitor. In Tournament 8, Smokey Massacre became the second person to achieve total victory on Spartan Sasuke. And in Tournament 13, he would follow that up with a second total victory, being the first person to ever achieve that feat twice on the same course. Smokey would have a rough time after that, which included his first and only fail on the second stage in Tournament 16. 
but it was right back to domination as Smoti has made it to the third stage in every tournament since, setting the new stage two clear streak of six clears in a row. In the last tournament, Smoti almost defeated the third stage but would be grilled by the final jump of the pipe slider. Smoky Massacre. The greatest competitor in Spartan Sasuke, his statistics are truly mythical. 16 clears on the first stage, going for his 17th. 15 clears on the second stage, going for his 16th. The most by any competitor on both of those stages. And then, of course, the two total victories. He is the last competitor to run stage 1 for the 12th time. There's a reason why he's Mr. 100. This is the run everybody is looking forward to every tournament. They want a glimpse of that smoky magic. Let's see if he can produce more of it here on Halo Infinite. Smoky Massacre, the final run on Stage 1 in Tournament 23, through the Pharaoh's Box. Now for the Jumpy Spider. I don't know if he's going to be gunning for Fireball's fastest time. That's going to be really tough to beat. I think Smokey is more focused on getting the clear, which is definitely the important thing. It is very important that he gets his 17th clear. Smokey gets a nice drop down on that Jumping Spider. He, that was his personal worst in Tournament 7 when he failed the Jumping Spider, but Smokey, through the Eclipse Prism, another new new obstacle. Now for the Warp Wall, Smokey Massacre. Oh, does not get up the wall in one. Ooh, taking a very short run up, Smokey really struggling with this warp wall. He takes four attempts to get, up, to get up it, but somehow still has 50 seconds left going into the Joust Clash. He did fail to walk, but he still got plenty of time. 40 seconds going into the pit stop. Two obstacles remaining for Smokey Massacre. He's into the second, the third, fourth, fifth Smokey Massacre. Now for the Rope Jungle, can he get up it and clear for the 17th time, going for his 8th clear in a row. He is nearing Swan Stage 1 clear streak, and he's going to get one step closer to that. Smoky Massacre, with 14.3 seconds remaining, picks up clear number 17 on Spartan Sasuke, his 8th in a row. Smoky Massacre. He's done it again. Was there any doubt? Smokey Massacre has done it again. He did struggle a little bit with the warp wall, but he was quick and efficient with it despite failing it that much. Smokey Massacre. Beautiful. Nah, let's, let's go. go. The goat. Let's go. The goat is the goat. And now it is time for the Spartan Slayer. Once again, the honor goes to the Jumping Spider, eliminating 22 of the 60 that reached it. The Jumping Spider is much different than it was on Halo 5. The obstacle now features a pallet instead of a bouncer, and they drop down to the fifth ledge. But no matter, the obstacle is just as hard as before, and it shows. It took out newcomers, regulars, seasoned veterans, and even an all-star. Better luck to these 22 in the future. And with that, the first stage is over. 100 tried, and 14 were able to clear. Shadowrun 132, Glowcombs, Patty Freakin, Soul Reaper 1025, Patrilla Fam 4, Hunter Unit 751, Sonic Fan, Flamosaurus, Strafe Helix, The Apex JD, Ump Double Ump, Sunnyside Splash, Fireball ZHC, and Smoky Massacre have advanced here in Tournament 23. For these brave 14 Spartans, the journey in the first Halo Infinite Tournament has just begun. Now, these 14 must face an even tougher challenge here on the second stage. second stage of Spartan Sasuke. Like Stage 1, it has been redesigned from the last tournament. It begins with the new box office. The obstacle I submitted to Season 14 of American Ninja Warrior will be the first test here on the second stage. Then it's on to a new version of the Salmon Ladder, the Triple Salmon Ladder. Eight bars with three on the first set, three on the second, and two on the last. 
make it up, and you're on to the double compressor, an always tough obstacle where you must wedge yourself in between the two compressors. Make it for that, and you're on to the Hanging Hoops. The Hanging Hoops debuted in the last tournament and has been made even tougher here on Halo Infinite. Get through the three hoops, and you're on to a new obstacle, the Omega Ring. Similar in function to the Metal Spin, competitors must wrap around the Omega-shaped structure to one of two ledges and then make the big jump for the dismount. And lastly, it is the Domino Hill. Returning for the first time since Tournament 4, this obstacle originally consisted of 20 dominoes with every 5 getting further apart. Now, the obstacle consists of just 6 dominoes that get thinner the further you progress. Survive all this and hit the landmine at the end in under 85 seconds, you'll be moving on to the dreaded third stage. Now let's hear from our competitors how they feel going into stage 2. Um, to be 100% honest, I feel pretty confident on stage 2. The only two obstacles that I'm really worried about are the triple salmon ladder and the hanging hoops. But I have gotten past them in practice, so yeah, I feel pretty good. Uh, the primarily there are two, the triple salmon ladder and the double compressor. Those are the two. You know, I'm feeling great. Uh, I'm happy to be back. You know, uh, there was a moment there where I wasn't really playing Xbox, not practicing much. So just doing tournaments for, uh, you know, my friend's sake. And now I'm back practicing, ready to go and ready to remind people what this is all about. You know, it's about us versus the course. So not against each other. Hopefully I can go out there and uh, beat stage two. It's a tough one, though, so we'll see what happens. I won't be lying. I am incredibly nervous because it's the first time. I've not been doing very well in the practices that we had beforehand, but I'm hoping it will just all click when I get into the actual room. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm happy to clear stage one. That was a good hurdle to accomplish. That streak is still going. As far as stage two goes, I'm a little bit worried about the salmon ladder, the rings, pretty much everything. So it, it's honestly going to come down to just if I can execute or not. I know I can do it. I definitely can do it. It's just... Can't let the nerves get to me, and hopefully I can push through. Yeah, uh, pretty happy. Uh, the start to Infinite has gone a lot better than the end of Halo 5 did for me. Um, I'm not confident at all. I feel like I've got a way higher chance of getting my 8th fail rather than my 5th clear on this stage. But I'm happy enough as long as I don't... As long as I beat the first obstacle. You know, I hit my target, my personal target of beating, of getting back to stage two of this tournament. So we're just going to see what happens. I'll give it my best shot, see how far I can get. There's, this is a very difficult stage two. Um, I could go out on pretty much anything and everything. I feel like I usually end up saying at this point in the tournaments, uh, put on a show and hope I can do something interesting. To make a long story short, I'm feeling very not confident at all, but because I have to fill up a little bit more time, uh, I am scared of the rings, I'm scared of the thing after the rings, I'm scared of the domino hill, I'm scared of basically everything besides the first obstacle, which sounds about right, uh, for a stage two. Um, out of all of these obstacles, I was, um, I would have to say the rings, um, they did some damage last tournament, and I'm feeling I'm gonna do some again. Um, apart from that, the rest of the stage I feel pretty much okay on. Uh, hopefully, it doesn't come back to bite me. Uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. That stage one run was the most painful run I've ever done in my entire life, physically. This stage two, uh, as far as obstacles, it's not too bad, but I'm glad the time limit's in the end because there's just no way I can go fast on this. The salmon ladder. I, I don't know how I'm going to get through that. This double compressor hurts my wrist very much. Um, I'm going to need a miracle to get past this stage. Yeah, this stage definitely has me nervous. It's, uh, I mean, every single obstacle on here is very available. So I just got to take out one jump at a time, just try to hit my marks, and now see if I can make it through this thing. The obstacle that I, I am the most worried about is the hanging hoops, because I'm not... It, I'm not sure. It's, it's just hard. I don't know how to say it, to word it out. It's just hard for me. 
I'm excited. Uh, I'm a little nervous. Stage one went absolutely butter smooth. You know, we was cruising like we always do, cleared with a bunch of time left. Uh, coming into stage two, um, I've got a few obstacles that are sticking in the back of my head. I'm not feeling as confident as I was going into stage one, but I feel uh, pretty confident that if I get through the rings and I have minimal slip ups on the salmon ladder, I could see myself on stage three, uh, but we'll see what happens. Well, I'm very happy to be back on stage two. I can definitely say that there's nothing I want to think about less than any type of clear streak or any records like that. I don't want that in the back of, the, of my mind. I just want to focus on the obstacles themselves and focus on this tournament and not you know, the bigger picture. So my goal is to beat this stage, but there are a lot of tough obstacles that I'm going to have to get by. So I'm going to just really hone in on my skills, try to focus as best as I can, and hopefully make it back to stage three. 86 people failed stage one, and now 14 remain to take on stage two. Let's see how they do on this redesigned second stage with new tricks and traps. First to go will be Shadowrun132. He is one of three competitors this tournament taking on stage two for their first time. And there is Hunter wishing Shadow good luck. Shadow, he'll have 85 seconds to complete six obstacles, and it begins with my very own box office. He's into the second cube, into the third box, fourth, and Shadow Run is through the box office, and now must face the triple salmon ladder. Shadow, he does not get up to the second bar, having to save up a lot here on this first bar. He's really struggling. Shadow Run. Finally gets up to the second bar, into the third, heading across, but cannot get into the second set of the triple salmon ladder. Shadow Run's first attempt at stage two comes to an early end. And now we have Glowcombs, the second of our three people taking on this stage for their first time. A very similar case to Shadow Run. Both, both of them failed the rolling hurdle in the last tournament in their debuts. Both are taking on stage 2 for the first time, but can Glowcombs get further? Glowcombs onto the third box of the box office. Into the fourth, he's taking a little bit more time here, taking a lot of safe jumps on that fourth one. He takes a lot of time to get through the box office. Although the time limit, ooh, almost overshoots that, but gets a nice safe jump. Also struggling with that, but Glowcombs... He is a little slower, and although the time limit is a little more lenient than it has been recently, you cannot take it for granted. And now he's into the fourth bar, something Shadow could not do. He's into the fifth bar, the sixth, looking into the seventh bar. Glow comes, he's only got less than 40 seconds left. He's really going to need to hustle here. In fact, I don't know if he's even going to have enough time to clear the rest of the stage. He's only got 30 seconds left for the double compressor, and he's going to come up short of the first one. Glow Combs comes up short on the double compressor. But now we have Patty Freakin back for his fifth time on stage two, his first since Tournament 7. And there is his good friends Smoky Massacre and Snaz wishing Patty good luck. Both Patty and Snaz worked on the map Ground Pound Arena on Halo 5, which got featured. And now Patty Freakin' is here on Stage 2. He did beat the stage in the, la the last time he faced it. However, it is a very different stage compared now compared to the one he faced before. He's struggling a lot getting into this fifth bar. He's into the sixth one nicely, though. So... He's up the triple salmon ladder, now for the double compressor. He's into the first one, Patty into the second one nicely, and he's halfway through the third stage. But now for the hanging hoops, this has been made harder since the last tournament. Can Patty get through it? Patty is into the second one, but no, he's gonna slip off the second one! Patty freaking no! Oh, he was looking so good before he slipped off, but ah, oh, that's tragic. But now... We have Soul Reaper 1025. Hunter wishing Soul good luck. His fellow Brit. Soul taking on Stage 2 for the first time. On his seventh appearance, Soul Reaper would love to make it deep into the stage. Let's see how Soul does. Soul heading into a fourth box of the box office. Soul Reaper through that obstacle and now for the triple salmon ladder. Soul Reaper, how will he handle this salmon ladder? up to the third bar, 
across to the fourth. Launching up to the fifth. Oh, just a bad jump going into that fifth bar. Able to save himself though. Soul Reaper now up to the fifth bar. It took a bit of time. Oh, and he slips back down to the fourth bar. Soul Reaper is crumbling apart here on the triple salmon ladder. He's starting to run low on time here. He's only got 40 seconds left going into the seventh bar. Soul Reaper, I am not confident that he's going to be able to clear within the, t the time limit. But he's going to try to get as far as he's as far as he can. He's through the double compressor. And now for the hanging hoops. This is where Patty freaking just failed. Can Soul get through it? No, he does not get a jump going into the second hoop. And Soul Reaper, he would have run out of time. But it is insult to injury with those hanging hoops. But now, a competitor who has cleared the stage two in the past, Patrillo Fam 4. He's looking for revenge today. He did fail the double compressor last tournament. Let's see if he can get revenge on that and the rest of stage two. Patrillo Fam 4, fifth competitor to go. We only have 10 competitors left. Not a lot left, but Patrol is going to try to be our first clear as he enters the triple salmon ladder. He's nicely up the first set. Now on the second set, looking up to the sixth bar, heading across to the seventh. Patrol, this is the best we've seen anyone do the salmon ladder so far. As he enters the double compressor, he's into the first one unlike Tournament 22. And Patrol of Fam 4, he's going to get revenge on the double compressor. And now for the hanging hoops. He has never faced this obstacle before. It is. We just saw both Patty and Soul go out here, but Patrillo Fam gets into the third hoop nicely. And he's got plenty of time for these last two obstacles. Next is the Omega Ring. Can Patrillo get through it? Patrol, he's gonna jump straight across and defeats the new obstacle. And now for the Domino Hill, the first person since Tournament 4 to attempt this obstacle. He's got 20 seconds left. He can take his time here on the Domino Hill. He's got two more left. Now into the last one. These Dominoes, they get thinner the further you progress. This one's only half a foot in diameter. And Patrillo Fan 4 is gonna be our first clear on Stage 2 today. With 7.1 seconds remaining, Patrillo Fan 4 has gotten revenge on Stage 2. Overcoming his demons on the double compressor, defeating the hanging hoops, and Patrillo Fan 4, for his fourth time in five tournaments, will be moving on to the third stage. Well done. Nice, oh my God, I thought you came, thought you came short, man. Before you came oh. Patrilla. Well done, Patrilla. Nice clear from Patrilla. Let's see if our next competitor, Hunter Unit 751, can follow in his footsteps. Hunter cleared the stage in his last attempt at it two tournaments ago, but he did not sound too confident going in his interview going into this run. So Hunter, he has failed a lot of stage twos in the past. Hoping to not add this one to the list, but it has been pretty tough so far. Let's see if Hunter can do it though. He's through the first obstacle, and now for the triple salmon ladder. Hunter into the first bar nicely, into the second. Ooh, comes up short of the third one. Get a nice safe jump. He's into the third. Oh no, he slips off the third bar. Oh, Hunter falling apart here on this first set, but gets up it now. Heading into the 4th one, but no, Hunter, just a little too much momentum going into the 4th bar. And once again, Hunter is out on a Salmon Ladder. His third time in the last six tournaments, he's failed a Salmon Ladder. This time, it's the Triple Salmon Ladder. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, well. Ah. Uh, Hunter, he... Had a fiend for failing Salmon Ladders recently, and it's happened again here in Tournament 23. But next up, we have Sonic Fan 10193. This guy has failed a Salmon Ladder in the past. That was his first attempt at the stage in Tournament 18, but he has not failed Stage 2 since. He has defeated Stage 3 in each of the previous four tournaments, looking to make it five in a row here in Tournament 23. Sonic Fan into the Triple Salmon Ladder. He's facing forward here on this Salmon Ladder. It is a very risky technique. This is a technique I have advised against 
before in the past, especially on Halo 5, but Sonic Fan, he's making it pay off here. He does not have a slip up. Now for the double Hello. compressor! Oh, oh no! Oh. Sonic Fan! Why did I have to kill that one? No, that's not what the I compressor. want. Wow. That's not how I wanted this to go. Uh. Oh, Sonic Fan. Failing stage shoot for the first time since Tournament 18. But now we move on to the All-Star, Flamosaurus273. Flamosaurus, he has defeated Stage 2 a lot. He defeated it for his 10th time in the last tournament. Now looking to get clear number 11 on the second stage today. Flame was worried about this stage. He always does have a tendency to worry about a stage as he as evident by a lot of his interviews and this has been a thing throughout all his career but Flamosaurus handling this triple salmon ladder very nicely makes it up to the 8th bar nicely Flamosaurus now for the double compressor he just saw Sonic Fan go out here but Flamosaurus is gonna get through it nicely but now for the hanging hoops it's been a tough obstacle so far but can Flame get through it Flame into the second hoop nicely Looking into the third hoop! Oh, close call there on the hanging hoops, but Flamosaurus is through. Now for the Omega Ring. How will we handle this new obstacle? Flamosaurus gets a safe jump on that bar nicely. Goes for the right chain as Flamosaurus, he's got 24, 23 seconds left for the Domino Hill. Flamosaurus, he has never faced the Domino Hill before, but Flamosaurus, he's making it across. He's got two more left he's on the fifth one looking into the last one it's got less than 10 seconds but flamosaurus is cleared with 5.6 seconds remaining to clear stage two for his 11th time on spartan sasuke well done flamosaurus yet another clear on stage two it was a very close call here on the haney hoops he nearly falls off, but gets a really nice safe jump. Gets a slide there, too. It was a near disaster, but Flamosaurus not phased by it on the remaining obstacles, and he's once again moving on to Stage 3. Well done. Now, six competitors left to take on the stage. Next up, on his 20th appearance, Strafe Helix taking on Stage 2 for his 11th time. Strafe Helix looking for clear number 9 on stage 2. It's rare that we see him fail stage 2. Hopefully he won't fail it for a third time. But Strafe Helix is off on the box office. Strafe Helix, he beat the stage in the last tournament. Looking to do it again here in tournament 23. As he enters the triple salmon ladder, Strafe Helix nicely up the first set. Makes it across to the second set, set Strafe Helix. He's got a minute left. He's nicely for the triple salmon ladder. And now for the double compressor. Gets into the first compressor nicely. Strafe is into the second compressor. And he's defeated the obstacle. Halfway through as he enters the hanging hoops. Looking across to the second hoop. And Strafe Helix is out on the hanging hoops. Much like Soul Reaper. He does not get a jump going into the second hoop. He tried going for it, but he missed times the jump button, and he does not get a jump off that first hoop. Oh, f oh. oh. I didn't even get a Jeez. jump. What the Rings. So stupid. Rings. Rings. <sighs> ah, Strafe Helix. A very frustrating way to go out on the second stage. Becomes the third victim of the Hanging Hoops this tournament. But now we have the Apex. JD making his third run at the second stage. He beat it in both of the previous two attempts at it. Hopefully he can move on again. The Apex JD quickly through the box office. Now for the triple salmon ladder on his broken wrist. He is keeping up his fast consistent pace. Despite the injury, the Apex nearing the top of the triple salmon ladder and he's there. The Apex, Joey, he's into the double compressor. Minute left, he's going very quickly through the second stage. But how will he handle the hanging hoops? It has taken out three competitors so far. Just saw Strafe go out here. Joey gets into the second one. Joey looking into the third one. Gets another safe jump and he's through the hanging hoops. He's got 40 seconds left for the Omega Ring. 
how will he do here going for the right chain a lot of competitors going for that right chain but Joey it he gets the safe jump on that dismount and heading into the final obstacle the domino hill Joey he can take his time he's got plenty of it but he's going fast here on the domino hill and the apex JD is through with 15.9 seconds remaining the fastest time so far here on the second stage well done Joey he has never failed stage 2 on Spartan Sasuke and he continues that streak here on Spartan Sasuke 23 clearing it for his third time he gets through the hanging hoops he gets through all the obstacles on stage 2 to move on to the third stage let's yeah. go Oh. Wow. <laughs> I got tears in my eyes right now. I never felt more pain in my life. Nicely done by Joey, but now we have the all-star ump double ump. Ump is back. Taking on stage two for his 14th. Is it 14 for 15? I can't remember, but ump double ump. He is back on stage two. And looking to clear it for his 11th time. That much I do know. Anyways, ump double lump. This onto the box office he's taking a careful approach here he was worried about this stage going into this run he has failed stage two before in the past but ump double ump on the triple salmon ladder quickly up the first set Ooh, it's a weird slide there going into that fourth bar but able to recover ump is up the triple salmon ladder this actually would be his 14th attempt at stage two i just remember now anyways ump double ump through the double compressor as he enters the hanging hoops how will he handle this obstacle he beat it last tournament getting a really short run up here on it but it's a close call on that second one but ump another short run up but he makes it pay off on the third one as well ump double ump he's got 30 seconds left 40 omega ring he goes for the right chain ump gets the safe jump on the omega ring and ump double ump is through that and now for the Domino Hill. This is an obstacle he actually failed back in Tournament 2. But he's beaten it twice in Tournaments 3 and 4. And Ump does it again. 10.1 seconds remaining. And Ump double Ump for his 11th time is moving on to the third stage of Spartan Sasuke. Well done, Ump double Ump. He had a close call here going into the fourth bar of the Triple Salmon Ladder, doing a weird slide. That is a thing with Halo Infinite and sliding. It has been reduced for the game type, but Ump Double Ump makes his strategy on the Hating Hoops pay off. He was worried about the stage, but no need to worry now. He's moving on to the third stage once again. And that brings us down to three competitors left to take on the second stage. Next up... Sunny Side Splash, the new star. He beat the stage in both of his previous two attempts at it. He's never failed the second stage before. Can he do it again here in Tournament 23? Going with that flame effect for his slides on the box office. Sunny Side Splash through that and now for the Triple Salmon Ladder. He's hugging that right wall. Ooh, comes up short of that second bar. But Sunnyside up the first set, makes it across to the second set. He is taking a bit of time here on the Triple Salmon Ladder, but he's quick up the second set despite the long lineup. He's got 50 seconds left. He should have enough time, but he does not want to be too slow on these remaining obstacles. Sunny Side Splash heading for the double compressor nicely. Now for the hanging hoops. He beat this obstacle last tournament. Let's see if he can get through it now. Sunnyside, he was worried about this obstacle, but he gets into the second one nicely. Heading into the third one, another nice jump by Sunnyside Splash. But he's only got 21 seconds left. It should be enough time, but he's got to keep up a good pace on these last two obstacles. Going straight for the dismount, that's definitely going to help him on time. As he enters the final obstacle, the Domino Hill gets a safe jump with less than 10 seconds. Sunny overshoots the second Domino of the Domino Hill. Sunny side splashes out on stage two. 
and he becomes the first competitor in Spartan Sasuke history to fail all four stages in each of his first four appearances, failing the final obstacle of stage two, the Domino Hill. Oh shoot. Okay, okay I just I just failed that. I had oh, no idea no. what I was supposed to do. <laughs> Sonny, he heard the clats and he knew he had to hurry up and it freaked him out going into the second domino. Oh, what a shame. But right now, we have Fireball ZXC. And there is Snaz on the rock wishing him good luck. And Fireball's gonna repay that by knocking Snaz into the water. Or the fake water, or whatever you wanna call it. I really hope they do add actual water. Because they don't have a title canvas, but yeah, whatever. Anyways, Fireball, he is onto the Triple Salmon Ladder. Fireball looking to clear stage 2 for his 11th time. Fireball looking very smooth here on the Triple Salmon Ladder. Taking a bit of time going into that 6th bar, but he's nicely up the Triple Salmon Ladder. Onto the Double Compressor where he has failed in Tournament 14, but Fireball is across and now for the Hanging Hoops. Ooh, he's... Going really far back. The big run up here for the second hoop. Going straight into the third one. Fireball is through the hanging hoops. And he's got plenty of time left going into the Omega ring. Fireball goes for it. He gets the safe jump nicely. Fireball's got 33 seconds left. Trying to get the fastest time here on the Domino Hill. He has beaten this obstacle twice in the past. And Fireball is gonna do it again. Fireball sets the fastest time on stage 2 with 21.5 seconds remaining. He has the fastest time on stage 1, and he has the fastest time here on stage 2. Well done, Fireball. He went full send here on the hanging hoops. Gets a big run up on the first one to go full send straight from the second to the third hoop. Well done, Fireball. Oh, That's fireball! Cool. Oh, that that money, oh. that money's coming closer. Oh, oh baby! baby. No. No. Those one hundred dollars to stop the hot, start up the hot dog stand. They're getting closer, indeed. But now, hoping to join the five that have cleared so far, is our final competitor to take on stage two. It is the two-time champion, Smoky Massacre. Smoky looking to clear stage two for his sixteenth time. This is his 17th attempt at the stage. That is crazy. But now, Smoky Master looking to clear stage 2 for his 7th time in a row. 7th time in a row. He did say he was not worried about the streak. He's solely focused on making it back to the 3rd stage. Smoky Master nearing the end of the triple salmon ladder. And he is up the salmon ladder onto the double compressor. Smoky Master is nicely through this obstacle and now for the hanging hoops will he be able to get through this smoky master got a big crowd watching him smoky gets a very good jump into that second hoop looking into the third hoop smoky comes up short smoky massacre is out on the hanging hoops and he is out on stage two for the only the second time in his career Smoky Massacre, he is undone by this tough obstacle, the Hanging Hoops. Smoky, no! He gets a really good jump going into the second hoop, but just like a couple of our competitors earlier, he fails to get an actual jump off the second hoop and fails to get into the third hoop. Oh, Smoky, no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh, oh. Didn't get up, damn. Smoky Massacre will not be moving on to the third stage. The second stage strikes back. Only five competitors will be moving on, the fewest since Tournament 16. Patrol Fan 4, Flamosaurus, the Apex JD, Ump the Wump. And Fireball, ZZ are left to take on Stage 3. These five have passed through the gates of hell to face the demons that lie within the third stage. Will any of them survive to reach the final stage? The 
the third stage of Spartan Sasuke. Eight of the toughest obstacles ever conceived. First is the drum hopper. Last seen in Tournament 16, competitors must climb up the five windows with very thin ledges. Next is the new globe grasp. Consisting of six globes, each globe requires massive jumps to complete. After that, it is on to another new obstacle, the Blade Hopper. Similar to the old Devil Steps, competitors must climb up six cylinders next to an angled wall, then jump across and descend another set of six cylinders. After that, it is the Lunatic Cliffhanger. That version of the Cliffhanger was introduced in Tournament 14, consisting of six ledges where eight of the nine people that attempted it last tournament defeated it. But that cliffhanger, it is not on this course. Introducing the Ultra Lunatic Cliffhanger. Now with two additional ledges including a crazy transfer to the 7th ledge, the cliffhanger has never been harder. Survive that and you're on to the body wedge. Five sets of angled walls where competitors must perform mid-air jumps to wedge themselves between the walls. Then it's the last of our new obstacles, the Pirate Hooks. Six angled hooks, competitors must wrap around the supports to reach the next hook. And then it's the Iron Thrones, one of the most feared obstacles in the third stage that eliminated three competitors in the last tournament. Finally, if you make it through all that, it is the return of the Flying Bar. Last seen in Tournament 14, the Flying Bar is the last obstacle and now consists of five bars instead of three. Made it across the bars and the final jump, you're moving on to the final stage. But miss the last jump, and you'll descend into the depths of hell. Let's hear from our five competitors now. I want to be totally honest. When I said over earlier at my stage one interview that I was just hoping for a deep stage one run, I didn't think I was going to make it this far. I didn't think I was actually going to get to stage three, but now that I'm here, I'm, I'm here for a good time, man. I, I I know I have the ability to go far on this, but no matter how I feel right now, it all depends on how I do in a run, you know? So, being completely honest, I have no hope of beating this stage. I will be genuinely shocked if anyone beats it. It's easily the hardest stage 3 you've ever had. Really the only one that's even close is 14, I'd say. So yeah, if I don't completely embarrass myself, I will consider that a win. Mentally, I feel terrible. Physically, I feel even worse. <laughs> There's no chance I'm being the second obstacle. God would have to come down from heaven and literally just make me float to the end of the stage to clear it. Um, I, I can't. Yeah, this stage is... Uh... Yeah, it's making me a nervous wreck here. I mean, every obstacle, almost every single jump's failable. It's got to be so precise on this game. Um, like you said, I mean, almost, yeah, so many obstacles are new, and even the returning ones are different because it's different, you know, physics in the game, you know, so it's all it's all brand new, really. Oh, uh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm excited and I'm nervous. Um, we've got a bunch of, not new, do new obstacles, not different obstacles. A few of them are new. Uh, but the jumping is just a lot different in this game. Uh, stage 1 and Stage 2 went really, really smooth. Uh, I don't think they could have went any better. Uh, coming into Stage 3, uh, which is always my goal for every tournament that I do, uh, I would like to get to the cliffhanger. Um, there's honestly any of the first three obstacles. Uh, you just got to stay uh, consistent and make sure you don't make any mistakes. Uh, I mean, I think I can do that, and I, ho I hope I can do that. Um, and if I get to the cliffhanger... Um, Honestly, it's just going to be a rodeo. Um, I'd like to get to the, uh, what, the fourth, the fifth ledge, and that big jump down to that little tiny one is definitely going to give me a run for my money. But getting to the cliffhanger, I would be super ecstatic, and we'll see how my stage three run goes. Only five competitors left to take on the third stage, and with all these new obstacles, this is one of the toughest third stages we have ever seen on Spartan Sasuke, but if they want to make it to the final stage, they must survive the eight trials of hell here on the third stage. First to go will be Patrillo Fam 4. An interesting note about all five of these competitors taking on this stage, they have all defeated the third stage in the past. 
but how will they handle this first stage 3 on infinite? It all begins with the drum hopper. Five windows he's got to ascend. A classic obstacle we haven't seen it in a while, but Patrol Fan 4 is attempting it. He is onto the third window. This is his first attempt at a drum hopper. And now looking into the fifth window, Patrillo is looking down to the dismount, and Patrillo is through the first obstacle. One down, seven to go. Next up, the Globe Grasp. It is the first of five new obstacles on this stage. It is similar to the old Snowball Grasper from Tournament 4, however, that is considered a different obstacle. This Globe Grasp consists of very tiny globes and they all require huge jumps as we're seeing from Patrillo Fam 4 but he is handling them nicely as he goes into the fifth globe he gets it one more globe left to go for Patrillo and he's gonna make it to the sixth globe nicely just needs the big jump to the dismount and he is through the new globe grasp and he is slashing his, his sword. He is worried about this next obstacle. It is the Blade Hopper. He's got 12 cylinders he's got to traverse. This is a very tough obstacle. He gets the mountain to the first one nicely. Patrillo looking into the second cylinder. Patrillo, can he get this jump? No, he cannot! Patrillo Fam 4 is out on the Blade Hopper. He gets a bad jump going into the second blade of the Blade Hopper. Is a good mount, but he just got a bad jump going into the second one. Oh, oh, oh no! I saw that. I saw it coming. This looks hard. This looks, hard. This looks hard really one. bloody hard. Patrol Fam Four becoming the first victim of the new Blade Hopper. Well, that is one competitor down. Four left to go. Next up is the All Star Flamosaurus. He beat the stage in Tournament 20 like Patrillo Fam 4, and now Flamosaurus. He made it to the stage in the last tournament. He failed the Lunatic Cliffhanger. He was the only person to fail the Cliffhanger last tournament as eight other competitors got through it, which is one of the big reasons why it's been upgraded to the Ultra Lunatic Cliffhanger this tournament. Even if tw Tournament 23 was on Halo 5, I still prob probably would have had the Ultra Lunatic Cliffhanger. But anyways, Flamosaurus on the drum hopper, an obstacle he has faced before in the past multiple times. Flamosaurus is into the fifth window nicely, eyeing down the dismount, and he's through the drum hopper. On now to the globe grasp. He has failed the globe grasp on Ninja Warrior of Halo 21. Hopefully that won't come back to bite him. He was worried about this obstacle. He's punching his pistol. Let's see if he can get past the six globes. Flame is across to the second one. It's taking a, a lot of time to line up for these. He's running into it. Gets the third jump nicely. Halfway through. Just three more globes left to go. Flame. Ooh, takes a pause there for the run-up going into the fourth one, but does not phase him. He's across to the fourth one. Two more globes left to go for Flame. Can he... Overcome the obstacle he failed on Hunter's horse. Gets onto the fifth globe nicely. One more left to go for Flame. Can he get onto the sixth globe? Flamosaurus gets the jump across nicely. Now just needs the dismount. It is a big drop down. Flamosaurus, he gets the jump nicely. But now for the Blade Hopper. This is the obstacle that just took out Patrillo and he's shaking his head. Another obstacle he's worried about. Let's see if he can get onto it. Flamosaurus looking into the blade hopper. Does not make it into the first blade! Flamosaurus, he was shaking his head. He was worried about this jump. And it has showed Flamosaurus chance to get into the first blade of the blade hopper. Ah, oh, just gets pushed away by the wall. Ah, oh, tough break flame. I was right to shake my head. Well, what went wrong? It's, I mean, I just missed the jump. It's really not hard to describe. And it's just, uh, I'm mad because yet again, I do worse than I know that I could have done. I didn't expect to clear this stage, obviously, for my 
a stage one pre-render view and this one, but I know I could have at least gotten onto that obstacle. But yet again, uh, I disappoint myself. And that is two competitors down before the cliffhanger. It is the Blade Hopper that's doing early damage here on the third stage. But next up is the Apex JD. On his last attempt at the third stage in, in Tournament 21, he beat it. The Apex JD, as we saw in his profile piece on stage one, is very good at the third stage. And he's looking to beat another one here in Spartan Sasuke 23. But it's easier said than done. This is one of the hardest third stages I've ever conceived for a tournament. I think that the other hardest one would have to be Tournament 14. But with all these new obstacles, it is such a tall order just to even get to the end of the stage. The Apex JD, with his broken wrist, he's gonna need to take each of these jumps one at a time. He cannot let the pressure get to him. He's on to the third globe of the globe grasp. Looking into the fourth one, Joey doing pretty good here on the globe grasp. He's not taking too bait of run-ups, but he's still making each jump. One more left for the Apex JD. Joey gets onto the sixth globe nicely. And he's made it to the Blade Hopper. Nobody has defeated this obstacle yet. Can Joey be the first? He gets onto the first blade nicely, looking into the second blade. He's got 12 total. Six going up and then six going down. He's onto the second one. He's made it the farthest out of anyone this tournament. But he's got a long way to go before he completes this obstacle. He's onto the third one, looking into the fourth. He's halfway up through the up section. He's onto the fourth blade nicely. Two more left before he's up. Joey into the fifth one. One more left before he can attempt to jump across. Joey, he's gonna get up to the sixth one nicely. And now looking to jump across, he gets to jump onto the se seventh blade and now must descend. This part is even tougher then going up, you don't have as much control, especially with that wall so close. You have to commit to each of these drops, but Joey is handling each one nicely. Joey Davis has defeated the Blade Hopper. On now to the Ultra Lunatic Cliffhanger. Eight ledges from hell. For Joey into the second ledge. He gets the 90 degree jump into the third ledge. Now for another one. Joey Chance made the fourth ledge! The Apex JD is out on the Ultra Lunatic Cliffhanger. His worst stage 3 result on Spartan Sasuke. Those 90 degree jumps have been made harder since Halo 5. And he makes it through the first one, but he gets caught up on the wall on the second one. That Cliffhanger ledge right there. Um, what went wrong? I just... I just hurt. My wrist was killing me. I couldn't even focus on the ledge. But I don't know how I beat that second hop supposed to go. Um, I guess I just getting, didn't get around the wall enough. And I failed. But as far as I'm concerned, it's a good enough run for me. I mean, there's a broken wrist. It's, uh, I, it's just, it is what it is. Maybe next tournament, it'll be healed and I can get further into the stage, hopefully. Hopefully that wrist does heal up, but now we are down to the final two competitors. Next up, Ump Double Ump, the man who has defeated Stage 3 more times than any competitor on Spartan Sasuke, clearing it in tournaments 3, 4, 7, and 13. It has been 10 tournaments since the last time Ump has reached the final stage, but Ump, he is coming into this run with confidence. He says he can defeat this third stage. Let's see if he can do it. Ump double ump on the drum hopper. Ump has faced this obstacle plenty of times in the past. Can he defeat it for his fifth time? Yes, he can. Ump double ump into the globe grasp. How will he handle the new obstacle? He's into the second globe nicely. He's got four more left. Ump double ump looking into the third globe. Ump is into the third globe. Now looking into the fourth globe, 
I'm double up. He cannot get a jump going into the fourth globe. Up double up. This is shocking. He has failed just the second obstacle of the third stage. And all that confidence has just been dashed away by the globe grasp. Oh, that is tragic. Yeah, I think I just, uh, kind of was probably hitting the pole a little too much and kind of bounced me down and jumped too late. I just wasn't able to get a jump off, but I'm yeah, still overall happy. I mean, made it to stage three. Uh, I beat that really stressful stage two, so I think all in all, it was a good tournament. I'm disappointed with that. I would be disappointed if I failed that obstacle, but now we have come down to the last man standing. This is Fireball ZHC. This guy, he beat the final stage. Not the final stage, the third stage in the last tournament. He has beat a final stage on another course, but not on this course, but Fireball, he is the last man standing here in tournament 23. And he's going to sixth the windows here on the drum hopper. This is a very risky move Fireball is doing here right out of the gate. But Fireball does not seem phased at all. He's gonna coast through the first obstacle, the drum hopper. But if Fireball fails the third stage, this tournament will be over. He needs to make the most of it here on this third stage attempt. He gets a jump, um, unlike Ump, overcoming that, avenging Ump. He's onto the fifth globe, looking into the final globe. Fireball, he is quickly through the globe grasp. He is on a mission to get his third clear on this stage. Fireball onto the blade hopper. We've seen two competitors go out here, Petrillo and Flame. Fireball looking to get through it, much like Joey. He's got two more left before he makes it up. One more left now, and he's onto the sixth blade. Eyeing down the jump across to the seventh one. He's got it. Fireball, he needs to commit on these remaining ones. This is such a tough part of the obstacle. Fireball is on the last one. But now, the Ultra Lunatic Cliffhanger. Nobody has defeated this obstacle yet. After eight people beat the Lunatic Cliffhanger last tournament, Fireball is looking to be the only person to clear the Ultra Lunatic Cliffhanger this tournament. Fireball is into the third ledge. But now for the jump, Joey just failed. Fireball, he gets it. He's in first place, but he's still got the rest of the obstacle remaining. He's into the fifth ledge. Now for the big jump to the sixth ledge. Fireball comes up short of the sixth ledge. And that is it. Tournament 23 is over. Nobody will be moving on to the final stage. Fireball comes up short of the sixth ledge of the Ultra Lunatic hit Cliffhanger. He just timed his jump. I don't know if he timed it too early or he just came up short, but it just came up short. Fireball will not be moving on past the Ultra Lunatic Cliffhanger. Oh, oh no! I touched it. Oh. I touched it. Oh, I touched it. God. Good run, Furby. And with that, it is game over. Nobody will be moving on to stage four today. Uh, tournament 23 coming into the new game, game has been absolutely fantastic. It's had its ups and downs. Uh, we've seen new competitors come in. We've seen old competitors come in. We've seen people that have been on the all-star ranks from, from Hit 5, Halo 4, come in to try this new game. And it definitely is a, it's an, it's an experience, honestly. We've seen people struggle. Uh, we've seen other competitors do really good that may have struggled in Halo 5. Um, I think this being the first tournament we've seen happen on the beginning of halo 5 we saw at the beginning of halo 4 it's going to take some time for people to to get used to this jumping to get used to the obstacles to get used to the new mechanics um i think this tournament went absolutely fantastic everybody did really 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 good um stage three as you guys can see is absolutely brutal um but i think down the line maybe next tournament maybe a few more uh down the road uh people are going to get better they're going to get used to this new game and we're going to see people getting really deep into Stage 3 and people that may have failed Stage 1 and Stage 2 getting to Stage 3. Um, so I think this is only the beginning of Halo Infinite. Uh, I can't wait to see uh, all these other competitors start proving themselves, getting their name out there. 
and uh, I'm excited for the future of Halo Infinite. And that will conclude Tournament 23 of Spartan Sasuke. 100 competitors from all walks of life took on the first tournament on Halo Infinite. But for the 10th tournament in a row, every competitor failed. This is the first time since Tournament 18 where nobody could defeat the third stage. But that should not take away from all the success we saw today. 14 competitors cleared the first stage, 3 of which cleared for the first time. The second and third stages proved to be a much greater challenge as only 5 people reached stage 3 and nobody could get past the 6th fledge of the Ultra Lunatic Cliffhanger. But as Fireball said in his post-run interview, the competitors will grow and evolve with the new game. With Halo Infinite available on both Xbox and PC, the doors are wide open for anyone to compete. This is just the beginning of a new generation of Halo jumping, and I am looking forward to what the future holds. I'm RPG445, and I'll see you soon for Tournament 24. Farewell, everyone.